Welcome, everyone. Another Plastic Cards podcast, a show where we break down the video game news of the week. My name is Fonzie. I'm joined by my co-host, Gavin Jones, indie game dev extraordinaire to the stars. <laughs> Let's keep adding on to that, Gavin. This just is going to gonna get, like, my my <laughs> imposter syndrome is going to just be through the roof by well, the end Or of it, like, t- turns around and you just, like, create something kick-ass because I've added this <laughs> incredibly long title to your name. It could it's going to be the Randy the Pitchford hobby grade <laughs> Friggin' collect-a-thon. Mm-hmm. Pope recommended. <laughs> Game dev. <laughs> Extraordinaire. You know what? I I, uh, I feel like the Pope would probably play. He like might. this Pope in particular. Has there been any Pope video games, like a Pope uh, car simulator kind of thing? Like you have to drive them around and If keep there safe? hasn't, I'd be so surprised. I wonder if they would not attack, but like poo-poo or something, you know, like send their their um their lawyers against it or something well how much like know. how much right do they even have against that though? i don't know you should i just i feel like they're they might be notorious for just just yeah. attacking anyone who says something weird or i mean or I, they, I feel like if south park can do all the shit that it's done with the jesus character in that show yeah yeah then the pope is probably <laughs> <laughs> like not off limits that's true or they'll, they'll officially like certify it like this is a pope certified you know appearance in a game and he's just like he puts his thumbs up on the box art kind of thing i could see doing like i I, i'd want to do like a special ops game but instead of special (laughs) ops it's special popes (laughs) Uh, i would play that that'd be awesome (laughs) how was your weekend it was really good uh went up and did there was like a science walk or science by bar 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 crawl thing i fell asleep already a science walk well, it was like a bar crawl, but it was supposed to be like science. Oh, okay. Stops. Well, you could include the beer part first before, like, if you were to try and get your friends. And to there join was you. food. It was. It was. Okay. It was kind of fun. See, um, that's all awesome. But when I hear science walk, I'm like maybe less likely to. If you're to text me, hey man, you wouldn't want to go walk. hear like science talks and sip a beer. Maybe I would. It depends on what mood I'm in. But yeah. but what'd you guys do? Uh, we just went around from uh, different locations and talked about kind of sciencey things. Okay. And, uh, that actually speakers. sounds rad. I'm yeah. just giving you shit for it. <laughs> You're gaining more and more of your virginity back <laughs> by the minute. Yeah. If there weren't beer involved, it'd already be back. <laughs> no, not like some super bro mode. I'm just thinking like <laughs> it also sounds it sounds awesome but boring at the same time. Yeah. That's cool though. Yeah. Nice. I saw Godzilla the other day. Did you? It was awesome. So was it is it in fact a continuation of the previous Godzilla storyline? Yeah. This is them okay, gearing is. up and uh, combining everything and they really reference Kong hardcore in this movie because they want to, you know, the next one is. I What's think his name like, better not be in this movie? Who? If I see one John C. Riley watching <laughs> Godzilla. <laughs> Maybe it's uh, only John C. Riley. It's he only plays John C. Riley. What's her name from uh, Stranger Things' his character is played by <laughs> John C. Riley? <laughs> That'd be awesome. Should we let this train pass by? I think we should let this train pass by. That's awful lot. I swear this. We haven't gotten far. Once it's muffled, it's it's usually when it's passing by, they're just like laying on it. But we have yeah. a train that that rides by the store. Yeah. But um, no, it was dope. I liked it a lot. <laughs> um, we watched it and we had fun. And I, I with those movies, I uh, there's some. Uh, I'm, I'm, I seem to be a sucker for it too. Like a style of movie where you have to shut your brain off somewhat, right? Mm-hmm. To have fun for the movie. And with Godzilla, for sure, you. I just want to see these monsters fight. So I don't really need to yeah. understand, and they they did an okay job of setting everything up, but that's yeah, good. where they excelled was the monsters fighting. I mean, I feel like that's what I want in a summer blockbuster, though. Like, yeah. I still think my favorite summer blockbuster of all time, besides like uh, Independence Day, Ooh. is is Pacific Rim. Albeit, those have the exact same storyline. <laughs> Like yeah, you watch them, down they, and yeah. they coming through a port or like one's just coming through a portal, but right. they're like repl- like it's it's the same plot. Uh, even with the speech from like the guy at the end, where I'm like this is exactly Independence oh, yeah. Day. Yeah, I forget uh, Idris Elba's in that too, and he delivers the same kind of yeah, yeah, very much Independence so. Day speech. Um, yep. <laughs> but uh, and even down to like the nuke at the end. It was, oh sure, yeah. Um, There's always a sacrifice from mm-hmm. someone. Yeah, they always seem to follow a, a very steady beat, like all of them. But yeah, but it was cool. I love seeing. Good. I feel like they nail Godzilla with these movies. Yeah, uh, just perfect. Well, this is like what we wanted out of Godzilla. We don't. Right. We want. We want fat Godzilla. Yeah. But we just want tough as nails, going at it. And that's what he is in this. He's just like effortlessly cool in every scene. He's just badass. Like yeah. you just want to have a beer with him or something. Like. <laughs> 
work out with him or something. He's he's just awesome. You want to work out? <laughs> there was a cool I saw on maybe it was you that retweeted it on. Uh, I almost said Tinder on a on a, well, on a Twitter was a uh, it was like somebody had redone Godzilla characters from this movie as mm. like uh cartoon like teenagers okay <laughs> and it was like like all the monsters yeah it was fucking fantastic so there's like a three-headed one yeah and uh they redid that as like this like uh popular girl like blonde popular girl and they're like <laughs> two blonde like twin sidekicks <laughs> and like godzilla was just like this big jock with a leather jacket and spikes on the side oh, like they, they knocked that. it out the fucking park that is awesome <laughs> so that's perfect too, and that that character, that monster, is in this movie, and yeah, I totally see that it's yeah. because yeah, that's uh, <laughs> I'll have to look that up. I think uh, that's the thing too, though, with this movie is like we've wanted. I don't think the last one, to my knowledge, I don't know enough about Godzilla, but I don't yeah. really know those two monsters that were in the last one. Um, the Mutos or Mutus, I think they call them, um, and it's like yeah. an acronym for something else. But I think that is a that's a thing. The movies go back so far, and there's so many of them. And a lot of them are just like only in Japanese. Well, they're dubbed yeah. and stuff, but like that's primarily where they were released and stuff. So there's a whole world that I'm not experienced with, hmm. uh, which I do want to go back in. I've just like over the years, you know, growing up, dabbled and watched random Godzilla movies. They're always fun, but they never like latch on to me. I wish I wanted to watch all the originals, but um, something yeah. about that. But I respect them 100 um, percent. So I'm sure those those they probably wouldn't are. age well. That's a thing. I kind of feel like seeing the dude in the rubber suit, but I, I dig it, and I I'm glad that you know that's we we're only here because of what happened exactly. with those movies. Yeah. But uh, they just nail. Um, well, they keep doing like because they'll have the American version of Godzilla, right? But they keep doing like animated versions of Godzilla that are straight from Japan, or like was it Godzilla 2000? One of the ones that was an, a legit uh, Japanese release of Godzilla, like from that original company. They kind of will. Oh, split. really? Yeah. They'll hmm. split and do like traditional Godzilla ones. And they'll do the ones that we know in, in America, like the, the Godzilla that came out a couple years ago, but, and then the, this one too. But, um, yeah. You mean they, they do dodged a, the Godzilla 2000 bullet? Well, they, um, that's where it gets weird because there was a Godzilla that came out in like 2000. That was the American one, but there's also another Godzilla that's, that's, that was, uh, a Japan one, like a Japan focused, uh, Godzilla, that was more traditional, but still like crazy out of sure. control. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Whenever I think of Godzilla 2000, I want to say this was the first movie where like, cause I, you know, every weekend, like my mom would give me five bucks. I go down to Blockbuster and rent a video game. Yeah. So since I was always renting video games and not movies, my taste in movies and television was really pretty poor. Mm. Um, so I had really low standards. <laughs> uh, but I remember Godzilla 2000 being the first, uh, movie where i was like that was bad <laughs> you might have watched yeah because this is the actual like japanese one oh. uh and this is their response to the last american godzilla at the time that was super like hollywood and kind of over the top yeah. that one had the more like slender cooler godzilla that was a little yeah bit that's the one i think of when i think godzilla 2000 yeah they both kind of released around the same time but mm -hmm. um there's a name of that it's a well-known company that does the gods or owns that franchise and it was kind of them like taking it back over yeah uh, i forget the name of it but no, I love it. Uh, I, I'm a really big fan of all the Godzilla stuff. But um, yeah, watch that. We went to. We've been uh, very used to going to like the 21 and over, um, fancier uh, theater, yeah. and we had to go to the the basic poor man's theater this time because <laughs> it only released in the the traditional ones, and it was it was fine. Like it wasn't that bad because we have what three proper uh, movie theaters here. Yeah. And um, that was the one that's the newer of the ones that have mm. been built in the past couple of years. But it, w it was fine. There was crying kids and stuff every once in a while. But actually, it, was, it wasn't that bad. Mm. But, um, yeah. Nice. Watch some Godzilla. It's a good way to spend a weekend. Right. Now I got to see that. So, well, the thing I really want to know, and you can't tell me, but yeah. I need to know. So they brought in three super iconic characters. There's a bunch, actually. I won't, you know, oh, reveal who, three. but yeah, okay. there's a bunch of them. So they brought in really iconic characters, which is, you know, what people wanted. Yeah. Um, but I would be very curious if they would tease at the end of the movie Mecha Godzilla, because if I were them, that's what I do. I don't feel like Mecha Godzilla makes sense in that universe because it's just like a giant. Ro you can't make that. I'm of. I understand what you're talking about. I'm of two minds because I want that so bad. Right. <laughs> It'd be so awesome. I think they can pull it off because. Um, th that three-headed monster you're talking about is um, Gojira, I think his name is. Or um, I think so. Uh, so he's actually in the in the lore of that story. He's from space, um, which I found out recently, mm -hmm. right? So he's traditionally from space, 
Um, they so they already have a character that's an alien, so I don't think it's that far fetched for the next movie to introduce something like Mecha Godzilla because I think that's what the humans the humans are working with Godzilla at that point, and they create their own mech to like either work with Godzilla when he like maybe in the storyline he dies or right. fights against them. I forget the the proper term I'm not or sure. the the. Chronological, chronological order of whatever's happening. I want to say it was one of those ones where, and I'm probably butchering this, but I want to say originally they build him to fight Godzilla, mm. and then eventually they use him to fight with Godzilla. But that's probably I completely forget. wrong. Yeah, there's something to that where, yeah. But I, I know in this movie, without spoiling anything with for for you, they the humans do they paint a good picture where they can start working together. And so I think that becomes a reality mm. maybe, you know, down the line where they could do that just because they're now working together. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, it's super, which dope. was totally shown in the trailer. So that's yeah, not because it's sort of right. And then the last one was really everyone else against Godzilla, but realizing, Hey, he's actually, you know, our buddy. They weren't even that against him though. Cause he was really barely in the movie until the last like that's 30 true. minutes, which was exciting. And I think they handled that very well. Yep. It allowed for more horror. Yeah, that's the thing. It was actually pretty, you know, tense and scary. Um, there's one scene in that. Is the new one pretty scary? Um, no, I think that it does shift in tone because they have to juggle so many uh, characters on screen, you know, monsters. So it is more of a faster pace, just uh, less scary. Right out, of the, right out of the gate, they start showing you stuff. So it is a different tone for sure. But I don't mind. I like seeing because they have to have all these things fights called, you know, King of the Monsters. So, yeah. but um, in that original uh, Godzilla, the one where the, the first one that released the remake uh, at the end, he does an atomic blast on that one character mm-hmm. and like blasts it down its throat like he holds it open. Yeah, I love that's one of my favorite scenes just of all of life. I want to I place it in my memory <laughs> like I was there. Um, it was, it's such a great scene. But that's yeah, the last Godzilla. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I highly recommend seeing it. Yeah. Uh, apparently, I was looking. Uh, someone tweeted the box office reports for it too. It, it's not re- um, performing that well compared to the last ones, mm. so that is kind of worrying. It's just a bummer because I want to see those movies, you know, continue on. Because um, yeah. what else is really like that besides Pacific Rim, which is kind of dead now? Yeah, it's it's dead. I mean, which is this would be a good one to reintroduce to the kids. I like. Was it that inappropriate for kids? This no, one? no. Yeah, it was. It was fine. I so, mean. So let's get a movie that adults want to go to with their kids. Right. Yeah, you think that should be a no-brainer. Like, that's the that's the formula you want, where you can take your bratty kids with you, spend more money. <laughs> that's what was nuts, too. It's like, um, so we bought, like, a couple of, or I think uh, we bought one popcorn, um, some nachos, and it was, you know, we easily spent, like, 20 bucks or whatever. Mm. But you'll see families there just, like, carrying bags of stuff. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's so expensive to eat here. Why are you doing that? But, I yeah. mean, people love it, and so there's still a market for you know, releasing these movies in theaters and making a buttload of money off of them. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, did you play any video games, Kevin? Uh, I did. I played I played more uh, uh, Steam World Quest. Ooh, nice. Um, which is still fun. It's, it's good that it knows its strength, which yeah. its strength is its interesting battle system. So you're really almost not doing anything else. You're basically battling the whole game. Because it's the card one, right? Yeah. Does it have the card aspect too? Okay. So, and that's that's been fun. Uh, I've been playing uh, some Void Bastards. So Ooh, we nice. could we could talk about that. Yeah. Um, I want to say there was something else that snuck in there mm-hmm. that I forgot. It's sort of a problem right now. There's so many good games that just came out and they charge like 20 or 30 bucks. Like, mm. I'm going to go poor. Like I wanted to get that new R- Roboto Gato or Gato Roboto or something I haven't from seen Revolver. That. Uh, it's a really cute looking um, black and white game. Yeah. Um, which I've been watching a little bit of streams of it, and the sound design is like amazing. All the reviews for it were like, "This is very derivative." So, is it um, like a, now? Is there a name for this type of of style? It reminds me of like a Game Boy, like traditional Game Boy style. If but, there, uh, I mean, if there is, I don't know the name of it. Um, some people may call it like uh, one bit or something, one bit, but okay. that's not really the way bits and color work. So it's sort of an appropriate name. Gato Roboto. Uh, yeah, Gato Roboto. Um, but yeah, I've, I've heard from the reviews. It's like if you're looking for something innovative and fun. Yeah, it's not that. It's just cute and got good sound. Well, um, so that's I, too bad. It looks cool. Like I do want to. Uh, I've never seen this, so I'm, I'm definitely gonna check it out. 
Yeah. It reminds me of, I just wanted to see in that initial um, style, uh, uh, art style, that there's that one, it was a 3D world, but it was like a Game Boy kind of style as well. I think you're on a ship, um, like a pirate ship. It's, it's, oh, a, it's a release. Oh, uh, Return release. of the Obra Dinn. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that, that eventually was, came out. Or that was a bit more like, honestly, I, I feel like that art style was closer to classic point and click games from like a black and white Macintosh. Oh, uh, okay. That which makes I feel sense. like is what that that got a little bit better. And it nailed it. That game was fucking gorgeous. Did you ever play any of it at all? No, I kind of, it, it passed me by. I forgot about it. it so was, it actually released? Yeah, it released. Mm. And uh, the, so it's a puzzle game and, it, or like a deduction game. Okay. And basically, your job is to, like, you have a thing. That can travel back in time to the moment in which someone died. Yeah. And you can hear like 30 seconds to 60 seconds of audio from right before they died. Okay. And you can sort of see the scene. And there are all these different like scenes of that where like basically almost everyone on the ship dies. And you have to figure out uh, everyone's name Mm. and how they died. And if they didn't die, where they are. Interesting. Like on the actual in the area that you are like you find their bodies or something or yeah okay. well you find like you find a little bit of remains and then you're gotcha. able to travel back in time to when they died but it's just a still huh it's like still 3d models and you move around and try and figure out you know what happened that's interesting yeah it's it's so tough though like i got i got decently far i want to say like maybe 50 percent of the names okay and because there's a lot of names, and at that point, I was just like, I don't think I'm ever getting to the end of this. Gotcha. Now yeah. we're to the tough names. I see. So that's cool. Yeah, that's neat. Um, yeah, I re- remember seeing it, and I just kind of forgot. Like so many other games, where it's like I'll try and keep note, and then it just yeah. it comes and goes. And yeah, I gotta check that out. Yeah, I didn't play much this week. I did play a little bit towards the end of the week of um, Avoid Bastards. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. Um, I wish I played more of it, but I, I'm, I'm starting to get the hang of it now where I'm mm-hmm. just kind of um, flowing through. And so when I die, I know exactly what to start doing again and I'm um, having more fun and just like getting used to the mechanics in the world. But uh, yeah. how do you liking it so far? Uh, I think it's, I think it's okay. Yeah. Like I, I still think the audio and the graphics are fantastic. I'm not in love with the gameplay. Mm. I like, I feel like I like my rogue lights a little more fast paced and this one gotcha. is kind of slow and plot. I mean, I like FTL, which is very slow and plotting, but like this, um, it, you know, it, it sort of has that weird feel of like a Bioshock style game and you sure. gotta, you really got to reserve, you know, your ammo and be cautious about that. There's a bit of fear with some of the enemies yep. and I'm starting to play a little bit more like I don't have to kill everything. Oh, okay. So yeah. I haven't locking tried the that. doors and stuff like that. Gotcha. I also didn't realize until like last night when I was playing that when you start locking a door, yeah, um, you can walk away. Um, yeah, well, I, I've done that where you're locking it and then I'm just kind of backing up and then I just take off. Yeah, you don't have to look at it. Oh, you can just hit the animation and just you walk away. Yeah, which I imagine I is sort of exciting when you're like fighting an enemy and like you're running away from an enemy. You know, you turn around, you hit the lock button and you keep running because just yeah. in case he gets there before. Yeah. So that's sort of a neat tension-y thing. Well, I had the opposite that still it still built tension where I was I thought I had to hold it. So I'm waiting for that one dude with like the blue spikes and he's walking up mm-hmm. and I'm I'm watching him as he's, you know, walking towards me and I'm trying to lock the door. <laughs> and I think at that point, the first time like I missed it timing wise and he's just able to come through and I just, you know, booked it yeah. again. But I had to watch him as I'm, I thought I had to hold the door locked. But yeah. um, I see what you mean with that. Yeah. yeah, there was I think Kotaka posted like an an update over the weekend saying just how it it's the gameplay sort of uh, repetitive after a little while, you know, like yeah. it's, it can't really shake it somehow, but yeah, it'd be nice if there were a little more uh, enemy variety. I absolutely fucking hate. There's these one little like squeaky voiced ones that sometimes like they float around. They're like little babies that float and shoot at you. And um, it's not like the, um, the janitors or whatever, right? No, like the, it's it not like the kids. janitors. They're not that. Mm, no, I think the janitors are the tall ones. Oh, you're right. They're just like the shorter, like look like, yeah. alien child children or whatever but yeah and those ones i absolutely hate and they're like i got on one map where they like swarmed me like 30 of them uh. and like i got through it but i was genuinely pissed <laughs> like this was not fun that right. was like i don't feel like i won i feel like i just endured gotcha um and yeah but it's 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 neat um, I definitely kind of want some of the upgrades just so I'm not so pissed off all the time. Sure. Yeah. I know some of the, I was watching a trailer footage or like maybe somebody on Twitch 
But um, just seeing some of the guns you can create eventually mm-hmm. look really awesome. But it yeah. seems like a grind to get there and a mm-hmm. slow one. But um, I do, yeah, I want yeah. that to experience that. But yeah, I'm also starting to get to the point too where like the the design of the game they said was like you know you look at the map beforehand, you plan out your route, and then you sort of go. I'm always checking it as I run. Like I'm yeah, which that, which you need to. But I I've started to real so some of the upgrades will be like uh so now you can get ammo for this gun, in um this room mm. this specific kind of room or oh, like okay. so i'll i'll tend to like and you want to get to the hole so you can see where all the loot is so in my mind like the first thing i think is like okay where can i get ammo uh where can i get uh coffee i like to get coffee first because that makes you move a little bit faster right, right, right. and like triple damage so the first thing is like, i realize the damage aspect i know how you mm-hmm. could move faster but there's also those like oil slicks or is there a negative to those or those you're just moving around faster it's hard to move accurately like, like oh, there have okay. been times where i'm like trying to go through a door <laughs> and I'm just yeah. going right. past. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm starting to feel a little bit of that strategy. Gotcha. Um, but still not really having fun. Yeah, I wonder so. if there's kind of a barrier to push through before or if it's just more of that as you play. Yeah. Of that feeling. I'm not sure. Yeah. But, but the variety is really cool with the levels anyway. I wish the enemies were a little bit more. Yeah, I feel you with that. I'm feeling where I'm experiencing more of the same. Le- I know it's random, you know, so I'm seeing more of the same kind of loadouts to where I would like a, a bit more of a change, but I've all, I'm also like super, you know, beginning uh, at, yeah. at, the, at the beginning of it. So mm-hmm. maybe it kind of opens up a bit more. There's also, I've only experienced one time jumping a ship as there's uh, not marauders, but like uh, also pirates jumping on and having oh. to fight them. I died instantly. Did but, you? Uh, yeah. But I do want to see that aspect of it too more. Yeah. That is sort of interesting and something I like they do with the map where there are elements that kind of move around. Like there was one, there was like a world eater or a ship eater. It was okay. destroying big ships like the actual levels yeah um so i couldn't go near it um and then there was one that would destroy a small ship which would be my ship so i couldn't go near it loud train someone's got a point to prove <laughs> y'all better move out the way yeah i'm a um, train <laughs> damn it or there was like a mine which i moved on just to see what it did it okay. explodes and takes most of your health gotcha um, <laughs> it does exactly but what it's but i want to say like it exploded on its own if i um didn't get to it quick enough oh, okay. which i think happened so i wonder if like maybe if i was on a ship near it yeah and then it blew up if it would deal damage mm, i wonder so yeah but yeah interesting game yeah i want to check it out more um it's also one of those um uh it's on the game pass thing so i've just been yeah. jumping in with with no um no risk i'm just you know like jumping in and yep. if i don't like it i'm jumping out it's time um, to get the game pass man because i was wanting to get that other game outer wild i played a little bit of that is that on um, the game pass or is it, that on, on the epic store yeah okay. uh, it might also be there but it's on the game pass yeah. too um for xbox but i didn't um, see it on steam interesting i wonder if it's uh, if it's epic then it seems like everything's you know yeah. going there but um, it was cool. It was, uh, I didn't spend enough time to fully understand the, you know, what I'm supposed to do, but they let you loose really quickly where you get to just kind of fiddle with stuff. And I really like that aspect of it. Yeah. And the story is tied to that. So the more you mess this up, the more you understand what's going on. Hmm. But yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm just like, maybe like half an hour in that world. So really no, no idea what's going on, but hmm. yeah, we so had a bunch of crap happen. Yeah, we did. We should probably talk about yeah. the news. Let's see, Gavin. Um, I have some stuff in order, but otherwise there's um, just kind of a, a smattering of, of random news bits. But uh, uh, we have um, some news with uh, Fallout 76. There was an interview with Todd Howard over mm-hmm. the week. Um, so IGN has these um, these things called unfiltered, and they're just a one-on-one with a game dev or a game director, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So Ryan McCaffrey, uh, he talked to um, um, Todd, uh, I just had his name, Todd Howard, uh, Bethesda, and he kind of... T. Kinda Howie. T. Howie. <laughs> You got kind of, um, you know, as much as a, of an honest uh, kind of insight on the development of Fallout 76 as you can get, but um, they, they went in, in depth and talked about the release, and they underst- understand the shortcomings of Fallout 76. But um, here's a quote I can pull up from Todd Howard in that interview. So um, in, in response to actually um, how Fallout 76 was received in the development, um, so this is a quote. We knew we were going to have a lot of bumps. That's a difficult development. A lot of new systems and things like that hey, we were going to try this new thing. Anytime you're going to do something new like that, you know you're going to have your bumps. You know a lot of people might say, that's not the game we want from you, but we still want to do something that's trying new things, Howard said. That was a very difficult 
difficult development on that game to get to where it was. A lot of these difficulties ended up on the screen. We knew, hey, look, this is not the type of game that people are used to from us, and we're going to get some criticism on it. A lot of that very well deserved criticism. Uh, he goes on. How Howard uh, went on to say that Bethesda never expected Fallout 76 to get the highest review scores. Even from the beginning, we thought this is not going to be a high Metacritic game. That's not what this is, given what it is, Howard said. If there was one thing I would have done differently, it would have been to find a way to scale um, to let people uh, play the game 24-7 before you say, everybody in, here you go, pay us. Howard also clarified that... Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How Howard also clarified that Fallout 76 was developed not principally by the main team at Bethesda Game Studios in Maryland. Instead, the entire Bethesda team in Austin, Texas, worked on Fallout 76 with support from teams in Dallas, Montreal, and home base in Rockinville, Maryland, where a lot of people contributed. Hmm. Um, anyone, anyone catch the, the license plate on that bus he just threw that team under? <laughs> yeah, why kind <laughs> of uh, reference You didn't need to say that. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, maybe to kind of save face or or kind of keep the quality that they're known for with their main team. I'm not sure. But um, if he would have uh, paraphrased that, and there was a longer interview that that's, that's taken from, but maybe he paraphrases that with saying, like, but we love that team, we trust them, and we trust them. They also gave them a, a different kind of project to work on. You know, it wasn't like a mm -hmm. cookie cutter, like, hey, make the next Fallout, which if you follow these steps, maybe you're more inclined to success. This was like a totally different a spin on it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just some insight on the development with Fallout 76. It's interesting. Yeah, um, there was a, so that was released on little bits of that was released on what Saturday and um, some people online like mainly uh, there's a well known um, um, guy online uh, it's the he runs a gym quisition. Um, oh, Jim Sterling. Yeah, he was you know pretty um, quickly negative on it. Just the fact that they can. Jim Sterling right. is <laughs> negative. <laughs> yeah, and he's awesome. But yeah, he he's really quick to give him shit. Todd Howard mainly about how they knowingly knew it was you know. Uh, the message coming down the line is this thing isn't going to be ready. It's not up to up to par, but they end up just kind of releasing anyways. And maybe that shouldn't be something that's so accepted, you know, in the games industry. Yeah. And it is, I mean, it is accepted and we've certainly gotten really good things out of it though in the past. Like, I mean, there's definitely a lot of not exceptions to the rule, but I mean, I don't know. I, I figured that they would be able to pull it off better than they did. Right, right. And maybe that's, you know, because they let that separate team work on it, but it's still the buck stops with them. It should, right? Or yeah. they should kind of take responsibility for that. Well, I feel like still I, this is one of those things where I think a lot of the problems is the engine because this is still a modified version of the Fallout 4 engine, and that mm. engine was never built to make a game like this. Right. Just use, like, another engine that's meant to scale like this. They have another engine that they've used for... Uh, Elder Scrolls Online, right? So they yeah. have an engine that can be played with a lot of people. They can build big worlds very, very quickly. Mm. Uh, that game is still expanding and got a good player base. Uh, I've, yeah. I've heard, I don't know if it still has those problems, but I heard certainly at launch that it had sort of lag issues. Um, you might be right, but I do remember when that um, when the, the Elder Scrolls Online released, it didn't have much of a negative you know, reaction to it. It seemed like mm -hmm. they kind of, for the most part, had it down. And yeah, they kept supporting it with DLC, and there just wasn't a huge negative reaction that I saw with that game, for sure. Yeah. But I know that was a different team that, um, that developed that. I forget the name of it. Elder Scrolls Online? But, um, yeah, oh, yeah, apparently. But um, but you're right. Like, how about, you know, they have access to another engine. Uh, why not do something like that? Yeah. But um, that might just show some of their uh, um, hesitation on upgrading. You know, I don't know what the future looks like with that with that engine, but... It's time to, you know. Yeah. Which is always astounding because they have like id software, which yeah. is like they're known for engines. Like a lot, most modern game engines are still like based off of like the Quake 2 engine. Just gotcha. like they take that basic framework and build from there, which is still stupid astounding that that's actually a thing, but yeah. it was that <laughs> good. Gotcha. Um, so, yeah, the, the, it's just so, it's weird. Yeah. Now, um, it's not the end for Fallout 76, right? Because they have... Um, I was just looking up this up last night. So Wild Appalachia was the last DLC that they announced. And um, it finally came to... Uh, That's a fun name. Right? <laughs> it finally came to an end last week. And so now, gearing up towards the, their announcement for their, um, their showcase for E3, mm -hmm. you would, uh, we would assume that they would, uh, they'll plan out their next uh, DLC for Fallout, the next uh, l levels of support. Um, they have three... Um, let's see. They have a, a, a couple of announced DLCs that they haven't announced a name, but they will fully support. 
um, fall to 76 with that. Oh, actually, they have a name for them. So Nuclear Winter and Wastelanders. So mm -hmm. maybe we'll just see that in more detail with the Bethesda showcase at E3. Yeah. Something I'd really like to see with, with this series. So to my understanding, part of the reason people really like uh, Fallout uh, or not Fallout, uh, the the Elder Scrolls Online is mm. um, it's set in that really cool universe of you know Elder Scrolls, but the yeah. gameplay is actually quite different than a traditional like it's a That's lot true. more action based. You you watch people online, and, like it plays a little bit more like an MMO. Um, so they sort of got those two components to it. I think this game needs to differentiate itself more from a fallout game interesting that's a like good point you've already or from a new 3d fallout game you've already dropped vats like to a different degree like yeah. change up more stuff and yeah really really run wild with it that's not a bad idea because yeah you're right and with i think that's interestingly enough that's what turned me away from elder scrolls online because it looks so much so much differently or look like it played differently from the last ones i didn't jump in but that could be their strong suit because they're not tied to that engine it's a different right. gameplay um so they can really um yeah change it up and kind of figure out what works and go with that yeah um if yeah. you don't want to play an mmo don't play that game right like that's right. so what is what is the genre for does it need to be more like a destiny or does it need to be like more I like wonder. a maybe a little bit more looter shootery because like those Maybe. games aren't really that looter shootery. No, you can kind of try and play them that way, but they're really they're just um, it's the controlling of your of the you know the, the things you're collecting your um, the story uh, elements uh, interplay with with each other. Like the strength was never really the gunplay and that kind of you know that kind of aspect to it. So yeah. maybe you know pull away further. Well, it's funny because um, that reminds me of um, Fallout. Uh, is it uh, what's that uh, mobile game they put out? Not Fallout Bunker. It's like Fallout um, Balder. Mm, you're uh, right there. I'll look it up. But um, you know that was a completely they took Vault like, seventy. No, Vault seventy six. No, Vault no. Dweller. Um, anyways, they took that idea of you know some of the mechanics. Fallout of, Shelter. There you go. There we go. With Fallout Shelter, just just uh, managing your your shelter itself and mm -hmm. the you know the things you still have and uh, they kind of just went a different route with it. Maybe do something like that with. Um, with the Fallout franchise, but um, yeah, I and know. I hear that game is great. I played a little bit like r initially when it launched, but uh, not, I didn't pick it up afterwards. But I know they kept supporting it. I would think you would like it more because you're into city builders, and yeah, it's like, like sort of like a city stuff. builder, yep. like a sim game. That's a thing. Um, maybe I should have just spent more time with it, but um, but uh, yeah, I, I like the idea for sure. But uh, yeah, Fallout Shelter. It's got that fun Fallout personality, and that's right. Yeah, and that was such a strong suit, like just the the wackiness of the characters and how it was like dark but funny, and yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But yeah, they have their yeah. E3 showcase coming up. I'm sure, they're going to be interesting. More excited for Doom Eternal. Uh, I for don't know sure. if I don't know if the developers behind the Dishonored series have anything up their sleeve. Ooh, uh, yep, I have them as a possibility too. Oh, do you? Um, well, I nothing confirmed that they might, be, but it's been time. You know, enough time has passed. I hope they get to do a new IP. Like um, I love, so they did, or they did uh, Prey, didn't they? They did, yep. So and I and I was so happy to see, like they got another IP and they killed it again. Yeah. Like we just need to throw more money at these developers because they give us good stuff. You're right. So they yep. know how to they they know how to combine like the old school and the new school into video games yep. and do it right. You're totally right with letting them handle a new IP because they really have been. I think with um, um, I had the uh, name of their of their like of the stealth uh, game that they worked on, which I love, but I'm blanking on the name. Dishonored. Uh, Dishonored. Yeah. Um, they. I'm not sure if they initially started with that franchise or created from the ground up, but they at least were with it for a long time. Well, it was sort of a riff on. Oh, was it Thief? Maybe? Thief. Gotcha. Yeah, which was funny because people were like, hey, this is a pretty good uh, Thief-style game. And then the new Thief came out, and people oh, were yeah. like, this is a pretty bad Thief-style <laughs> game, and yeah. it's got the name. <laughs> yeah, so, no, you're right. I would like to see them um, take on a, a new IP and just yeah. use their magic on something else. Just more – I just want them to build more worlds. Like, their world yeah. building is – like, you. it's so good you can practically smell and taste the levels you're in. <laughs> like – yeah, no, that's why I love the the Dishonored games too, and yep. also the um, replayability or the open world aspect where you could kind of choose mm -hmm. just how you wanted to tackle whatever puzzle. Yeah, uh, and they do a really nice open world where it's not too open. It's yeah. more just like a small playground that's open enough that you really get to feel smart when you solve it. Yep. No, you're exactly right. So, 
Yeah, they do good. Not that I've played Prey. I just hear it's amazing, and I need to I, play. I it. wish I could get more into Prey, and I and I um, I'm such a, a grumpy old man when it comes to games. Where if the beginning experience doesn't latch onto me, it's hard for me to kind of keep playing through it. And that was a game where, for whatever reason, I just kind of let it go. Hmm. But um, I like the ideas at play with it. But um, yeah. yeah, it's another game of the backlog, really. But um, yeah, so let's see what else is we got. Uh, what else do we have for news? We have uh, this kind of weirder uh, thing that came out of left field. It's Cuphead on uh, Teslas. Have you heard about this? So uh, Cuphead is report reportedly going to be playable on Tesla cars. Why? Uh, yeah, it's more of a, I think them using that um, having the ability to port like various engines into their their um, you know the software they have on their iPad and letting people play it while they're while they're idle while they're parked. I mean that's so. cool. I assume that's using Unity. Uh, yeah, I think so. I have this uh, pulled up. This so. is from The Verge, and um, so this is that same guy, Ryan McCaffrey from IGN. He actually has a separate uh, podcast that's just about Teslas, and he got uh, Elon Musk on his <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a deep world of, of nerdy podcasts. Man. Wow. Okay. We should start a podcast where we just review Tesla-based podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> it might, we might be like the fourth one in line. Yeah. Um, so anyways, his uh, podcast is called Ride the Lightning, and it's just uh, you know about uh, Teslas. He got to interview Elon Musk. In that interview, they went into depth on it. Um, so Tesla, Tesla has brought in a handful of games for its in-car displays recently, adding some classic hmm. Atari games as an Easter egg back in October. Last month, Musk noted that the company was working to port Unity and Unreal Engine over to the cars, and that drivers, presumably while parked, would be able to control the game with the touchscreen, steering wheel buttons, and Xbox PlayStation Presumably. Controllers. Yeah, you hope there's some kind of really hard set. These you know, cars drive themselves. They do, but I like think... Like, we just had a porn where someone did <laughs> it while this thing drive itself. I don't trust people to not play video no, games. They're not. Especially when one is more likely to happen with me. It's the playing <laughs> the video game one. Thank you very much. <laughs> and or watching with everything, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so he goes on. We have Unity working, Musk told McCaffrey, and noted that, that also they have a uh, also have a beach buggy driving game, dune buggy or something like that. That's pretty fun. So when you should be driving your car, you're driving <laughs> a, a beach dune buggy. buggy. <laughs> uh, then Cuphead, we've got working. <laughs> So yeah, you're like really not going to be concentrating if you're playing <laughs> Cuphead. Like you can't look away from that screen, right? Yeah, that's the thing. And I and I presume that they have safeguards in effect where you can't play it unless you're parked or whatever, or the the car thinks you're parked. But yeah, uh. like in my Cuphead, you can't just like play and drive at the same time. <sighs> but um, I think I think it's about their focus on giving um, drivers options while they're just. Um, hopefully, you know, parked just to spend some time. They have this pretty dope on a lot of the Teslas. I think it's a standard. It's like a really huge iPad kind of setup. Yeah, I've so seen it's like it. Put something on there for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was very interesting. I th they were targeting the uh, summer release apparently, um, mm. but you can plug in a USB controller and play um, Cuphead. But it's only one level apparently because it didn't have enough room to store the entire game on there. But uh, yeah. Huh. I mean, I mean, there's a. I imagine that game is hard to pack onto something like all those textures and animations. Yeah. Like that's a lot. And that's a very fast paced kind of, um, the controls have to be super accurate. So yeah. they've got to make it work, but they work directly with the developer, um, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I would love to know more with that game about how they handle loading. And like, maybe that's why some of the, like the transitions for bosses are like a little bit longer. Kind of hang on the screen, being like heard, and then take off. And then I'm back. sure that's all. You're right, intentional, because usually yeah. that you find that that's <coughs> all done for a reason. Like, or in uh, 3D kind of games where you have to, you have maybe a corridor, you have a, an animation where you're picking something up before. It's always because something else is loaded. Yeah. Usually, right. So yeah, I'm sure they're doing the same thing. Which is something I need to get better at. <laughs> gotcha. Um, let's see. We had um, George R. Martin is uh, rumored to be working on a game with uh, the From Software developers. Yeah, so... Uh, Prepare to be sad. <laughs> Those so games are already depressing enough as is. <laughs> it's a game where you just load up and die instantly, and you just only die in the game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so this is from Game Informer. Matthew Cato writes, A Song of Ice and Fire author George R. R. Martin is working on a number of projects in various mediums, and a recent blog post from him mentions that he has consulted on a video game out of Japan. Gamatsu and Wario 64 have tied it to an older rumor that Martin is working with Hideka Miyazaki and From Software on an open-world action title to be published by Bandai Namco and announced at Microsoft's E3 press conference next month. So, um, yeah. Oh, really? This is That's tied to an older rumor, 
but the, for he's for sure consulting on a game out of Japan. It's just they're connecting dots, and it's, it's possibly with that From Software game. And they think it but may be shown at E3. At the E3. That would be that would be a big one. I would still like. Do you want it to be Game of Thrones? Because I some sort of Game of Thrones property. Because I don't. No, I think it's fine. With it, they don't need that. It, they can just use the you know his his uh, writing ability to work on something that and I, that might be refreshing for him too. Although fans of his books don't want him to deviate at all. Like he spends so much time not writing, it seems like they want him to just do that. Yeah. So they might be you know grumpy to the fact that he's working on another story, but. I would like to see that. I, I mean, I feel like he he could say kind of like, fuck you to those people. Because originally, <laughs> like, this was... So he used to work in TV. Like, he wrote the Beauty and the Beast television show, the live oh, action one. Uh, so he'd worked in television. And this, when he started the series, this was sort of his, like, Hollywood will never adapt this. This is just for me. That, that's see. what I'm making it for. With Game of Thrones? Series? Yeah. And so when people came up to him, like, he didn't even originally want to give it to the showrunners. Mm. Uh, but they kind of talked him into it, and he was like, "All right, well, if you can tell me who Jon Snow's mother is, then." Oh, I did see something like that. Yeah, yeah. then you and get they it. Nailed it, right? They got yeah. it. Yeah. Um, like, so God damn, we got to make this thing. By good. the way, so this weekend I was hanging out with a whole bunch of uh, drunken youngsters. Which <laughs> did you feel old doing that, or? Oh man, I was I was like, can just beat me with a hammer. I'm <laughs> I'm done. I'm checked out. Like, let's go. Um, but they were very drunk and very high, and then they mm-hmm. totally spoiled the end of Game of Thrones for Ooh. me. And I'm like, I honestly don't care. Like, when I heard it, I'm like, you know what? It's tough, yeah. Um, yeah I'm fine. This I, one was also actively spoiled, you know, like, in real time on online, it seemed like. But yeah, it was my, also my spoiler blocker couldn't stop all of it. Right, I'm sure it was working overtime. I didn't know who was on the throne at the end. That was, like, a bit of a weird one. Did you try and – was the conf- conversation clearly going that route and try and stop them, or they were just, like, dropping bombs you know, without any warning of what was happening? It's when the excitement builds up, but also it, there's a point where I'm so far behind that I'm the asshole – if I'm be oh, like, sure. guys, <laughs> right. could you not talk about the Game of Thrones? Like, how far behind? No, you deserve it now. Yeah. You brought this upon yourself. <laughs> That's true. There's a whole argument with you. Yeah, like, how long should you? Peter Dinklage turns into a giant and <laughs> Redbeard has sex with him. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. It's, it's tough. Like. I think it was a bit weirder with the whole Game of Thrones things because it was such a huge property. Everyone would seem seem like they're watching in real time that they're also talking about it in real time. Yeah, about. which was frustrating because people on Facebook could have used like an ounce of fucking restraint. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now at, at this point, enough time has passed. It's my fault. Well, can you kind of decompartmentalize or like when you experience a spoiler, can you still somewhat like, OK, I know that happens. But what about the journey to that end result? I think it's interesting that I don't. There are certain elements that I don't know what the fuck people are talking about. Gotcha. So there's still something there where it's like. Yeah, like I knew about a twist with a certain lady. Yeah. Or she does a certain thing, and people mm. are like, oh, something, something the whole time. Like mm. they've been showing. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking <laughs> about. Yeah. Uh, or the guy who. Sorry, the person that. Yeah, anyway. But. <laughs> yeah, you try to be so like vague that you end up not describing anything at all. <laughs> right. So, yeah. First did a thing and people did or did not like that thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. And the boobies, they were the best, <laughs> but you'll never know which one because there were so many. Yeah, just all kinds of different. <laughs> boobies. Boobies. <laughs> uh, well, Gavin, I think this next thing is right up your alley. Um, do you remember the Cadence of Hyrule game that was announced? Oh, yeah, yeah, the yes. Crypt of the Necrodancer, uh, Legend of Zelda skin style. That's Do you know the official name of that game? Because mm. I'm reading Cadence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necroman- Necrodancer. I can't remember. Featuring the Legend of Zelda is what I'm seeing as the actual name. <laughs> I can't. That's a long name. <laughs> right. Uh, I, I, yeah, I can't remember. Um, let's see. I'll kind of Google this. kind of a problem. Cadence of Hyrule. That is a bit confusing. So the main character of the... Oh, it's of all the of it. Full title. Cadence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necro Dancer, featuring the Legend of Zelda. That's a mistake. <laughs> that is a mistake. Part two, or like, put some, I want something else at the end of that. Well, it's even like, how many people that aren't hardcore fans of this genre know that Cadence is the main character? I didn't know that was a person in the game. Okay. Yeah, that's the main... Well, like, most of the... I want to say all the characters' names are like music puns. Oh, gotcha. Um... I forget what her mom and dad's names are. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of music. I mean, the name is a music pun. Like, sure, he he likes puns. He feels like they're fun selling points to the game. Uh, so if you add more puns, <laughs> then well, yeah. you sell more dollars or you sell more copies. Exactly. Well, it catches ethics. people's attention. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, anyways, about that game, um, there was a potential leak of on the uh, release date, and it, it's looking like a June release date is is really all we have with that. That's crazy. Um, Nintendo does have another E3 Nintendo Direct next week, so maybe we'll see something from that. So my body is so ready. <laughs> But um, I thought you'd kind of dig that. There's a new trailer apparently that shows off some new uh, game mechanics too. Mm. That that is definitely one thing about that game is like there's a bunch of really cool enemy like behaviors, okay. um, but because of its gameplay system, there's still so much room to do so many different types of enemies. Like, <coughs> I think he really left it as as many enemies as he can he did in that game, so there just wasn't too much to memorize. Oh, okay. So he did a very nice variety, but there's totally room to expand. In a second game. Gotcha. So, should be good. Oh. You're also a big, um, pretty big uh, Smash fan, right? Smash sure. Ultimate. So, there was, a, I don't know if you got the chance to d- uh, experience it, but it was a Smash Ultimate VR mode that came out over the weekend. How'd that work? Uh, apparently pretty bad. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I have this. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, it was not a good idea. Was so it laggy or was it? It was um, apparently super laggy. Um, there's a bunch of issues with it. So actually, um, Cecilia Denistacio of Kotaku kind of wrote a kind of breakdown of it, mm-hmm. um, explaining some of the issues. So um, in the thanks, I hate it category, Nintendo gave <laughs> us a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate in VR this week. <laughs> Yes. Nobody asked for this, and yet here we are. <laughs> <laughs> After loading up the mode in Smash's Ultimate or Smash Ultimate's Game and More section, the game suggests players watch the CPUs duke it out before joining in themselves. Uh, you can move the camera around to enjoy a battle from different angles. If bot voyeurism isn't your speed, you can challenge a CPU or three on about half of the total available Smash stages. Smash Ultimate VR is a single player only. Those aren't the only restrictions. Time mode is the only game option, and there are no Smash bales, balls or items. Um, there's a lot of debate. Oh, that's just how hard it is to run. That's why they're picking those stages, too. Apparently, the graphics are pretty bad, too. But, I mean, that's... A it's what you have to do. <laughs> right, right. There's a lot of debate over the best way to play Super Smash Bros. Game controller, or GameCube controller, Pro Controller, handheld, connected to the LAN. But there will be no debate that VR is the worst. <laughs> um, somebody more generous than me would compare Smash's, Smash Ultimate's VR graphics to Smash 64's. Yikes. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. To that end, Smash Ultimate VR does succeed as a c- cinematic mode for viewing two bots fighting each other in, <laughs> in trash graphical quality. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, they go on to, you know, really uh, go into detail on how it's a pretty bad experience. But, um, yeah, it seems interesting that they, they released that because it's a game that's really uh, focused on, like, just you have to be up to snuff with the ability to play the game, you know, like with the speed of the controls and the – what's happening on screen and and also you're limited to in the vr mode holding on to the thing itself like it still yeah. doesn't support you holding your hands freely it's you're right. locked onto it playing a labor-intensive game i just like to think wasn't the, the director is that sakurai or am i thinking the wrong yeah, kaze guy? sakurai something like i want to say that's the director because he pushed himself so fucking hard to make this game like talking about like this game is killing me yeah like and then they make him do this shit. Like, <laughs> I like to think that, like, he heard, hey, you're making a VR mode. And he was like, and I quit. This is, this is the day <laughs> I quit. This is what broke me. Sorry. It's your fault. <laughs> uh, Masahiro Sakurai. Is yeah. Right. Yeah, he had it. Um, yeah, interesting. And I'm not sure if they handed this off to another. Maybe they have this, their own little, like, VR um, uh, side group that are just, like, porting these uh, various modes in the games. But um, yeah. it's they are modes that no one's asking for that are neat. But, um, yeah, they just kind of, I imagine they quickly go away and people will not play them. But I really hope they didn't make Sakurai <laughs> do anything on that. Yeah, you better not, not have had to lift a fucking finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <sighs> well, let's see. We also have uh, Google Stadia announced that they're going to have their own uh, live stream this Thursday uh, to announce kind of what they have in store. Um, looking forward. So it's this, this Thursday, yeah, yeah, um, June 6th. There's Right. So uh, if you're thirsty for Google Stadia news. Mm. Um, So Jonathan Dornbush of IGN just kind of lays it out. Google is set to unveil, to finally unveil more information about the Google Stadia streaming platform it aims to debut later this year. 
Uh, Google announced Tuesday, or sorry, today, the first ever Stadia Connect will air on June 6th at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on YouTube. Google promises a Stadia pricing, launch info, uh, whether that to be an exact date or simply a time frame is unclear, and game announcements will be included in the Connect. Google announced the first party studio for Stadia development at GDC 2019, but it's unclear whether the studio will be showcasing anything it's worked on thus far. But um, that's pretty cool. We're going to see, hopefully, some pricing, get an idea on when they're launching. But they are set on launching this year. And in what form, I'm not sure, whether it's just, like, you know, in beta form or it's, like, full-blown release. We'll see. Um, what are you thinking about Stadia so far? I don't know. I... Yep. Bethesda said they weren't showing Starfield. At the, yeah, they confirmed that they're the not. Well, as much as they, you know, who knows if that's just a, a, you know, a trick as well. But they said that there's well, companies no tend not to just say right. they're not showing because that's just lying to your customers right. at that point. People get pissed. I agree. Um, unless you're Randy Pitchford, in which you do it anyway <laughs> and piss off everyone. Yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, they said they're not going to show that. Yeah, so probably not. But, I mean, that was my thing. Like, the evidence points to, like, Starfield's coming out on the Stadia. Mm. And, like, this, like, that was my big prediction. And I still feel like it's going to be true, considering they kept saying the technology wasn't here, the technology's not here. Whoa, and now okay. they're working on it. Um, you think they're referencing that, or they're waiting for something like this where they don't have I, to... I think they were referencing the Stadia. Gotcha. Um, yeah, they, they said they, they, they always want to make that game, but they never did because the technology wasn't possible to do it. Mm. And this unlocks a lot of things. That's true. Um, if so it works, I mean, it could. They could technically be not lying if they showed it off at the Stadia event, but then they couldn't show it off at E3. Right, at their so, event, yeah. I mean, which could be possible because if this is a streaming game, you're not going to be able to stream shit for me three. <laughs> Yeah. So it's you can't. I mean, that's the shitty thing. You can't have like live gameplay demos at like an event center or Stadia. That's what gets the, tough. Yeah, the internet can't handle it. Yep. So they really have to rely on their own, you know, events separate from wherever they can control the the Wi-Fi speeds and that kind of thing. Yeah. You're right. But um, with the pricing and launch info, how do you think they launch this year? Like, um, they're not really since they have no hardware to release. They're not restricted to, restricted to the same kind of like holiday season format that everyone else is used to because it's not something you're going to go and buy with your mom. It's something that you download. So, well, yeah, what do you expect from them as far as when this comes out? The Google Battle Pass. <laughs> yeah, some kind of you know Netflix and all encompassing you know <laughs> subscription that you just get all of their little projects. Or you, you get all your games in loot boxes. Gotcha. And uh, <laughs> you just got to keep paying, trying to get the one you want. I see. And, you know, there will be, like, all terrible loot box systems. You can get uh, repeats or whatever they're called, duplicates. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you're just like, fucking... Yeah, Assassin's Creed for Assassin's the fifth time. Assassin's Creed again? <laughs> <laughs> I have yeah. so many Assassin's Creeds. I got to melt them down into crypto Google coin. <laughs> How did Google not jump on the cryptocurrency bandwagon? I like, don't know. They've got the top minds over there. Maybe they created their own. I'm not sure. And just didn't yeah. do anything with it. Who knows? But um, yeah, so it's interesting. We'll see some uh, info on that this week. Um, they did, uh, when you mentioned Starfield, they did partner with um, Bethesda to show off Doom um, uh -huh. on that initial release. So maybe there'll be something with that. They sure did. And it looked terrible. <laughs> I can't believe it looked that bad. Gotcha. That was. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I'm on the fence. I'm. I'm curiously optimistic you know uh, i'm hope that they're gonna provide something that works for the most part because i understand it's not going to be like the crazy high fidelity you know high quality visuals that we're used to on pc or on console but i think they're fine yeah. providing something else this isn't that you know yeah it's also certainly neat with 5g becoming an actual mm. option sure yeah so yeah this platform as weird and wonky as it is uh, it's maybe the most future proof out of all of them, right? Because it can just scale with internet speeds and yeah. you know. The problem no is it's not, you know, it's not pass proof. It's not mm. middle of the woods proof. It's not yeah. soldiers in the Middle East wanting to chill after That's definitely true. Yeah. yeah so you're so. going in knowing that you're gonna limit a lot of your market, but yeah. Yeah. So we'll see that. That's this week. We'll kind of watch that as it goes on. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a couple of E three drops or news and little tidbits. Mm -hmm. um, there was this thing that released uh, referencing a new Splinter Cell, possibly. So this is from GameStop. So uh, Wario64, which is a Twitter page, tweets a bunch of news and like leaks and stuff. 
So um, they tweeted, GameStop had the Splinter Cell Sam Fisher goggles up for pre-order as an E3 collectible yesterday. This is today. But for some reason, delisted them today. So I'll show you the actual picture itself. Um, it's kind of a cool little novelty thing that we have. Uh, it's these little like um, s um, Splinter Cell uh, goggles that you can't really tell in the picture. But the um, placeholder came up for 40 bucks, and then they removed it. So I guess... What makes it more interesting is the fact that they posted this. It's an E3 collectible, and then they remove it. So that's what makes it seem like, uh, is this time to uh, uh, release of a Splinter Cell that will be announced uh, at uh, Ubisoft's thing? I'm not sure. but um, I would love if it were uh, Splinter Cell Rabbids Edition. <laughs> I would laugh my ass off. Uh, that could be awesome. Splinter Cell's coming, dude. It's just coming. No one's going to be surprised you when this so? happens. Like I think, I mean... This and you got the guy like bringing up Splinter Cell the other day, like it's, yeah, that kind of also uh, it's a lot of these things that align that because there's no one bit of information that is a full, you know, the the best yeah. pe the best uh, bit of info, but they all kind of help each other and and strengthen. So we're, yeah, and it's yeah. also a no brainer. It's like it's been a while since we've we've seen. It's time for uh, Sam Splinter to come Cell. back home. Yep, yep. So we have a full blown. This isn't a. Uh, this is an actual leak of something that was supposed to be announced. Ooh, was it uh, the um, Square Enix one? No, so this is from Ubisoft. This is the next Watch Dogs was leaked today. Who fucking cares? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you, you might not care, Gavin. And did, I do don't, you like? I don't either. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I did play the... No, people like them. Um, I don't know who these people are. I've never actually met one, I always but the I do idea. know it's popular. Yeah, and I, I'm the same way where like I did play the second one uh, months after it came out. And it was cool. It was interesting. I like that play uh, on it. It was in San Francisco. The the cool um, gadgets, the hacking. I like that. Yeah. But it was never enough to keep me around. Um, so I'm not sure. You're right. I'm always on the fence. I see that they sell and people dig them, but it is a huge uh, title and it it leaked today. But yeah. um, so this was uh, it was leaked by Amazon UK. But um, a lot good of job <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> right. A lot of the, yeah we talked about a lot of these leaks are just retailers trying to post the thing to to pre order. Or the the title on their page so that they can coincide with when they're dropped, but they never quite. A lot of the times they don't quite like get the timing right. Which is so funny too when you think of the original purpose of E3 was to try and get your game onto shelves of these retailers, yeah. and now it's like people are already on the shelves. The retailers already know. Yep, and they're fucking it up. Yeah. So uh, there's some details on it. Um, the third Watch Dogs has now leaked out thanks to Amazon UK. This is from uh, Jason Schreier of Kotaku. And it's called Watch Dogs Legion. Kentucky can confirm. Can uh, confirm. Like we are Legion. Mm -hmm. mm. So you're already super negative on it, Gavin. <laughs> we'll see. Kotaku can confirm that this one's real, as we've heard the name from several sources plugged into the company. Mm. Watch Dogs Legion is set in uh, post-Brexit London, as we confirmed a while ago. Post-Brexit London? Yeah. I like that Ooh. they're tying more politics into their games. but I know they That's going to be fun. Right. <laughs> It's, uh, let's see what else we got. Um, here's the really interesting gimmick. You can play as any MP NPC you recruit in the game. Um, from, yeah, from the product description, play as anyone. Every individual you meet in the open world has a full set of animations, voiceover, character traits, and visuals that are generated and guided by gameplay systems. Um, so this is Jason quoting. Uh, I don't trust this. Yeah, interesting. I I've heard the same. Uh, so this is back to Jason. I've heard the same, and also that you'll see different things at different points in the game depending on which NPC you're playing as. In fact, from what I've heard, the system, system is so ambitious that it's been causing the developers a lot of headaches and may have led to at least one delay. Uh, we'll find out more at next week's E3. Um, but yeah, that was interesting uh, game mechanic to play as, mm -hmm. you know, potentially every NPC. It might be, you know, specific ones that you can actually choose from. But yeah. Um, and where does that take the story? I'm not sure. So, and, and it, it does kind of beg the question, like, how many people can you recruit? Right. Like, what's the limit on that? Because it does say recruit specifically. Uh, it's just one of those things where, you know, is it another fable growing the trees in fable, right? Oh, okay. And it's one of those systems where would it even be worth it at the end? Now, the whole, mm. like, playing as a specific character and experiencing a specific thing is absolutely fantastic. Sure. And I hope they lean into that and truly deliver something upon that. But... Yeah, what do you think about, so it's apparently the game mechanic or the game itself is generating either, you know, through combinations, um, it's generating a full set of animations, voiceover, character traits, and visuals. That's uh, so hard. It seems like it, right? It's a lot of data crunching. That would be a nightmare. I wouldn't want to work on that game. 
Right. And especially <laughs> like you can get that to work and be awesome, but then, and maybe it's not a big deal, but eventually you find the one character that's just like this garbage uh, <laughs> combination of all these random things that did not work. Which would be fun to try and beat missions <laughs> with the, the garbage character. Yeah. Um, uh, you know that uh, that could certainly be uh really kind of fun and honestly now that i think about the animation system so there's like euphoria um which allowed for like you know ai driven animation i mm. want to say unity had something kind of similar that they announced like maybe a year ago and ubisoft uses unity right that's their main one i, I feel like for like the assassin's creed and this is also open world no no no, no, no am no. i thinking of something else you're just thinking of the name unity oh, okay gotcha. <laughs> um uh, so I, I think there is definitely the technology is now out where you could probably AI drive an animation, how natural it's going to look. Cause even like, uh, like in Grand Theft Auto three or was it four? Hmm. What was the last one? The last one was five, right? Five. Yeah. Last one. Was five. So I'm thinking of th four, mm -hmm. like those like AI driven animations would look really wonky. Sometimes it did a great drunk person simulator, <laughs> best like drunk person simulator ever. Um, but yeah, I think the technology could be there to do that part. Voices are going to sound probably modulated would be my concern. Yeah. Interesting. Cause they're not recording all these different styles of, um, you know, of human voices. They're generating it or altering it somehow. Right. Um, interesting. And how do you like, can they change the faces at all? Because people have just differences in our facial posture yep. when we talk or the way like people in different parts of the States will move their tongue a little bit differently. Sure. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, uh, it'd be cool to see how they pull that off. And if they show that uh, in the, in the reveal trailer, but um, yeah, I'm interested. I like that. That it's a, it's a different enough change on the gameplay to where I do want to see how that unfolds. And maybe yeah. they're leaving the idea of this one kind of um, um, protagonist and they're letting people play as kind of, you know, these random NPCs. I like that idea. Yeah. It's also kind of fun that, uh, so post-Brexit uh, England, that's a neat setting. Right. Uh, it's also one that's kind of funny because it's just like, well, what if you piss off people there? Well, that's a small enough population that who gives a fuck? <laughs> like you got less than half of England or yeah. the UK. No, not the UK. It's. Eng England? England's no, the, in UK. the UK, but yeah. Yeah, so you've got like less than half of the UK that compared to the rest of the world that's going to play this game, that's not. That's true. And like a lot of the, re oh, well, I shouldn't talk about. Well, you have San Francisco was the last one, and that was about. an even smaller portion, and yeah, the, that's a less of a of a group to, or a size. That's well, were you going to offend San Francisco though? Like this has potential to offend people, sure. but they picked a country that's like small enough population wise that the rest of the world will play it and be like, ah, this is, <laughs> we're playing around in Europe or in, not, I keep saying Europe. It's not, well, yeah, it's, in the UK. it is, but I, I don't know. I don't know the terms anymore. No. Yeah. And no, I'm out of the loop too, but I, I would trust in, because they're taking such a hot topic, a current ongoing topic and played around with it. So I, I would trust that they're, um, subtle enough to, or fair enough in how they kind of um, make fun of it or, or, or draw criticism of it. Uh, yeah. Just like, but Grand Theft Auto does the same thing too. It's not as precise, but yeah. it is a general like comment on the world itself. Grand Theft Auto, the problem with Grand Theft Autos though is, and it is, it'll like point out shit, mm. but it doesn't really say anything about sure. it. It doesn't take a stance. It just point like, hey, this guy's a hypocrite. And it's like, okay. Okay. And maybe they'll do the same cool. thing. I feel like that's even easier or the best route to do because if you actually have a stance, then everyone, you know, then then the internet explodes. But yeah. if it's more of presenting both sides, yeah, we'll we'll see. But um, no, that's super yeah. interesting though. Like, I wonder how they're going to toe that line. I think the trickier part is what year do they set it? Because that's Brexit it. has been happening for like a long fucking time. Right. Now. I did. I didn't pull it up in the same article, but I was reading that it's it is in the future, or near future. So maybe you know three, four years. They advance the technology a bit for the mm -hmm. game as well, like the hacking mechanics and stuff too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's post Brexit, and then you know plus a couple of years to see in that direction how bad, good, weird it gets over there. Mm. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm super interested. Will I play it? I don't know, but uh, <laughs> I, you know, I like that people dig it. We'll see how it goes. On the topic of Jason Schreier, he seems to leak a lot of uh, news, and uh, he's a really good uh, uh, journalist over at Kotaku. So he's the news editor over there. He had this tweet over the weekend. Um, he was referencing the um, the Death Stranding reveal from last week, right? Mm. So he's in a Twitter thread talking to people, 
Uh, he was just kind of, this is right the night before they do that that trailer. He was confirming that that's true, the release date's true, that kind of thing. He's hearing it from within the, the gaming industry. So someone else references, references the fact that uh, Cyberpunk, they're hearing it's going to release this year. And he has a response uh, to that saying that it's for sure 2020. Um, and he goes into detail. So, and this sure. is just, yeah, and this is I one mean, of those. I mean, it's for sure not 2019. Right, right. And that's what that person was saying. And he was like, well, hold on, it's not that. Um, without yeah. getting into like, because he does know inside information apparently. But yeah. Um, yeah, so this is Jason on Twitter. Um, and he's referencing the tweet itself. It was then taken over on Reddit and people were talking about it. Hmm. This has gotten a lot of Reddit attention, so some clarity. I've heard from three sources that Cyberpunk was aiming for 2019, but belief around the studio was that it was an unrealis- unrealistic target. Hmm. I expect first half 2020 or maybe even an E3 announcement of 2019, but then a delay to 2020. Um, I just wanted to kind of include that as far as, you know, keeping this in the back of our mind, w- going into what we'll see from Cyberpunk in E3 coming yeah. up. You know, does that mean, yeah, so does that mean we'll uh, get 2020, uh, early 2020 is what uh, Jason's saying, or is it 2019? I feel like 2019 is a bit early to come out with that game. But well, it's showing behind closed doors at yeah. E3. Like, that shit's not close. That's telling to where, yeah, they would have a game, a hands-on game demo on, on stage, right? Or, li- or yeah. uh, actually at the event. If it was legit, but you know, yeah, it's nowhere close. Yeah, it's interesting. He's usually not wrong with stuff, or he's he he doesn't like just boast or like um, kind of um, say things that are wa- or crazy off. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, he's interesting. So we'll see. I'd like to go back to that after E three and see if he was at all close to that. Sure. But um, that takes us to the topic of E three. We have a bunch of, of stuff we're going on. We're just now getting to the topic of E3? Yeah. <laughs> Is that not what we've been talking about for... Nope, just scratch the surface. Um, all I had was uh, this is the breakdown of what we know is going to be at E3 and then what we don't know but might be at E3. Hmm. So it's next week, right? Uh, we have our first um, E3 stuff is Sunday. Uh, we have Microsoft. They have their, um, their big uh, show. Um, so they did talk last week about having 14 first-party games there. Which yeah. is pretty nuts. I really wish I wasn't working that day. Mm. Like, I wish we could just sit on the couch. Are you working on Sunday? Oh, that's Sunday? Yeah. Oh, fuck. We need to get some tacos. <laughs> I'm down. I'm okay. Down. We need to get some beers and just like be like, Megan, I'm sorry. We're going to get really loud. <laughs> We're going to be fucking cheering. Got noisemakers, the <laughs> yeah. little thingies. Yeah. No, I'm 100%. Oh, down. I didn't know it was Sunday. Yep, Sunday. Now uh, I'm both even more hype. <laughs> both uh, Microsoft and Bethesda are on Sunday. Tell me Bethesda's first. No, uh, Microsoft's first at 1, mm-hmm. and then Bethesda's at 5.30. I'm just, it's going to be really sad if, like, Microsoft gets everyone super hype. It, I mean, if this happens where Microsoft gets everyone mega hype, yeah. and Bethesda just drains all the energy back <laughs> out, like, they'll never hear the end of it. So long as yeah. they're around, it's like, yeah, they're, E3 they're 2019, eh? Yeah. They're in a tough spot because they. Uh, what did they really announce? And we'll we'll, we'll go into um, Bethesda too. But for Microsoft, um, so they have their 14 exclusive titles, right? It's a big showing for them. Mm-hmm. They really, it's it's their ball to drop because Sony doesn't have a. And that's like minimum there. too. Yeah, yeah. So what's interesting about that announcement too? So that was from Major Nelson. So that's no, not Major Nelson. Uh, Phil, is it Phil Spencer? Um, whatever head guy at uh, Microsoft. I want to find his actual name. But um, he tweeted out they have 14 first party games that uh, for the actual show. But that's not 14 Xbox exclusive titles. That's just 14 of their first party games being revealed. Some of the game studios that they acquired, they have a couple of games coming out that are still going to be cross platform, like um, Obsidian with uh, Outer Wilds, Outer, Outer World. Sorry, that's not an Xbox exclu- exclusive. They just now own the studio. I didn't know that. Yeah, but um, I mean they'll still be able to show it off at their stage. Uh, Phil Spencer, there we go. Although I do think that they will at least give us a date on Outer Worlds, right? Uh, if they haven't already, like uh, some kind of confidence. I think that's time. fair. I really, it's tough. It's really tough to say though, because we have no idea where that game is, like state wise. We just have no clue. That's true. Uh, I mean, they did show it off. Was it last D three? And they showed a bunch of different, you know, places in the world. Um, they showed off gameplay. So I mean, uh, it's, it looks like it's getting close. But you're right. Is it this year? Maybe that's way yeah. too soon. But um, I kind of am expecting them to go. Hey, it's you know holiday season this year. But I think next year isn't that isn't that far off. Mm-hmm. Um, they did show off Halo or announce Halo Infinite last year with a CG trailer. Mm-hmm. Do we see some gameplay maybe this year? That's kind of yeah, what I'm banking on. I could play some Halo. 
Yeah, and they're apparently with this le- this next one, they're kind of changing the format a little bit. It's not um, open world, but they're exploring the idea of this this huge world that you then kind of tackle the mission separately. It's like it's a change up of the gameplay apparently. Huh. Um, yeah, so but ODST a little bit. Uh, w- I never played it, but was that the kind of um, gameplay in the ODST? Yeah, it was like you were going through this world and you could play the missions in different orders. Okay, because um, they were all like flashbacks to figure out how these people died. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, Spoiler. <laughs> yeah, how dare you guys? Uh, we have, I imagine, another series or entry in the Forza series, right? Sure. That's fair. Um, Make some money. Yep. I know Gears 5 is if they will show it off there. Um, so maybe we see a Gears 5 release date. I'm not sure the state of that game, whether that could be this holiday season too, but um, yeah. Probably. They're, it's been a while. That team is damn fast. Yeah. And I think they showed it off last of year. But um, Yeah, they did. Yeah. But so maybe we'll see a release date this year. That's doable. Um, there is a rumored, which you talked about last time, uh, there's a rumored Fable remake by uh, Playground Games, which is one of their studios. Um, rumored to be showed off. Didn't like that get re-released? I mean, if it's like a full relaunch, that's fine. Apparently, yeah, like remake, relaunch, them taking, or the next entry in that whole um, mm. that whole franchise. But um, Yeah, we have Obsidian, which they own, but apparently is still um, a, a cross-platform game. But I'm sure we'll see that shown off as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we have the State of Decay devs. It's just been a little while since the last State of Decay. I wonder if they're working on something else. Um, hopefully something different. But um, did you ever play the State of Decay games? They're like a zombie. I, I started to for a little bit, and then I got very bored very quickly. But I know there's there's a big fan base for that yeah, game. Yeah, for sure. I don't know. Like, I, I guess that's the thing. Like, If they're not making State of Decay, what else are they making? I, I wonder. Uh, maybe something with a similar format. I don't know. I'm not sure what, a, what the format would be. Maybe something that's... Um, State of Minecraft. It's <laughs> right. the same thing, but with boomers. <laughs> or whatever those things are called. Creepers? Oh, yeah. Creepers, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe something open world related, but because uh, they have that engine. But um, that yeah. engine doesn't really work that well for that, but yeah. Mm. Um, we have, uh, let's see, xCloud. Maybe they'll go into detail on that. That's their whole streaming anywhere kind of platform I thing. I see them going in on that. Uh, yeah. Apparently, they, they've said that they have various um, execs at Microsoft testing that out in the wild, like on their phone, on planes, and that kind of thing. Um, so maybe we'll see it on stage. Do you remember last year, the E3, they had all those PCs or like Xboxes set up. It looked like they were going to show and some And no kind one of did anything yeah, with them. It was like somebody counted. It was like, was it 100 or 50 battle or uh, uh, Xbox? <laughs> it it could have like, been 100. Right. And it, the theory was, I was watching, I was like, oh, they're going to do some kind of battle royale reveal. But yeah, they had all these Xboxes for no reason. But yeah, that was a weird yeah. presentation. That, w- that would be a weird one. How would you feel about a Halo battle royale? I think they're they've missed the boat at this point. Yeah, I it could have been good though to, if it, they had done yeah. it. That's one thing is like I'm not I'm not opposed to seeing that that mode, you know, in the next Halo. Um, yeah. It'd be pretty dope because yeah, I would like that. Um, that might be the last entry in that whole world that I want to see have a battle royale, and then we can kind of let it let that chip let that stay. die. Yep. Yeah, sure. Or at least let it. Uh, Move away from the the mainstream, and it's like now an obscure thing. But now, but what if we got a Half Life Battle Royale where everyone <laughs> has like <laughs> weird wonky? You got like you you got your gravity guns, and yeah. you're trying to defeat each other with physics. That'd be actually dope. And if you could combine hell, combine it with Gary's mod, so everyone's trying to make rocket <laughs> ships. So like you have yeah. verticality because you got to be able to build something that can get to oh that would be you got something there I think um, I don't think you could find a server that could h- handle that much physics that's going thing. on yeah just processing all that and you don't necessarily need the world of Half Life but just the idea of letting you mess with physics in real time in a huge open world with a bunch of people like that'd be nuts yeah that'd be insane although it, it, we say this forgetting that Microsoft totally made their battle royale game that weird like snow based one where everyone had like shuffle shovels and bows. I don't remember that. Uh, y- well, let's look it up. It's like two years ago. Um, okay. But yeah, it was like winter. And uh, it's weird that I, I want to say everyone starts off with all the weapons, unlike other oh, battle really? royales, or there's only like two. So you're never really at a disadvantage. What was the. Um, God, what else could I Google for? Uh, that? <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft Battle Royale. Was like That's it. <laughs> That's it. The internet's already forgotten about that shit. It's done. What was the maybe like the play style or like art style or was it cartoony? Cell shaded, like it looked mm. like Fortnite. Gotcha. And I want to say that was before Fortnite. Um, hmm. Yeah, I got nothing to help you out, bud. Gotcha. We'll, we'll the find internet has that. already forgotten <laughs> about this. Apparently, it scrubbed the information clean. 
But um, yeah, you could type winter in there because it was a very big winter theme. Gotcha. You know what that reminds me? Do you remember uh, one of the failed battle royale games from the Epic Guys or Boss Key? I think it was was um like um awesome time or like um uh it was one of the it was a free to play open world that was really outrageous. Oh, right Radical there. Heights. Radical Heights. Mm-hmm. So um the guy from Rick and Morty Squanch Games, mm-hmm. he acquired that um that uh, IP. Like that actual um, um, that, that that phrase or that name. So I'm not sure. That's all that was in the news. So there were people wondering, like, okay, was that anything? What are you gonna do with that? But yeah, that's just. We're not gonna hear about that this year. But no, but I we're am, talking about battle royale. I was thinking of that too. I want to know <laughs> right. what kind of stupid, right? Yeah, they're I mean, gonna do. I'm sure they will make something funny. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, then really the one of the big ones. I'm sure they'll show something off, but not a full blown reveal. But their next console, their uh, you Imagine so? going to gear up. Yeah, I think they're going to, just like with the Xbox One X, they're going to say, hey, next year we got something cool to show you. And how they had that kind of tag reel of all the developers talking about how they're working on it. Something like that to that effect for the next console, I think. Okay. Because we are I seeing people. I don't want it, but yeah, I could see it happening. Right. I'm in the same boat. I think we are seeing um, these um, companies gearing up for the next gen. So I think we should see something with PS4 or PS5 in 2020 as well. So I think they're just getting ready to then show the next uh, reveal yeah. on that. But um, and then maybe, you know, the whole thing we've been seeing rumors for the past year, a switch collaboration, you know, uh, Xbox pass on switch or some kind of switch collab. God, that'd be a hell of a mic drop. Right. That would be how they own the whole conference. Right. I really wonder, like you see Microsoft being so willing to let their games be on, you know, with Minecraft, they they said they were going to keep supporting other platforms like they have certain studios that are supporting other platforms. Like, I wonder if they learned that lesson with Minecraft. They're like, oh, shit, we actually make a lot of money. That's what I wonder. If I we're like on everything. Mm-hmm. So I I wonder if they're just like, fuck it, let's just get it on everything. Let's get our cloud platform yep. to Sony. Let's get on Nintendo. We're just going to make so much money. You brought that up a couple um, episodes ago, and I, I didn't really consider that, take it seriously. And I think that is a legitimate, at least they're laying the groundwork behind the scenes. I could see them doing that because yeah. I think that that's a total possibility. And yeah, they're going to find that, hey, we just make a lot more money. There's less risk with creating hardware. It's super expensive. And, you know, yeah. do people buy it? Yeah, just put your game on on the actual, whether it's some kind of next, you know, streaming service with whatever comes up, Stadia and whatnot, or um, Nintendo's thing. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I mean, you think about, like, think about how many games I would be able to play with you then. Right. Be a lot. It would be a lot. That'd be fun. <laughs> Yeah. Although, so then, if they don't make any uh, illusions or like any kind of uh, reveals for the next console, this E3, do you think that brings more uh, clout to that idea of them going more streaming and like just putting their stuff on different services? If they say nothing about the next Xbox? No. No? Mm. This is, they could say nothing this time and still be working on a secret Xbox for like next E3. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I mean, they've been working on a secret Xbox since they finished the last Xbox. Oh, for sure. Like, yeah, yeah. So but I wonder if them say nothing, what does that reveal, you know, about them not saying anything about the next Xbox? I feel like once you start reading into saying nothing, we're in an extremely dangerous. Like, you gotcha. can't. <laughs> we're <laughs> like, splitting hairs and splitting hairs and splitting Yeah, hairs. you can't. You, I mean, it sucks because there are some times where saying nothing says a lot. Right, and that's what I wonder if it's the same thing, but yeah, you're right. Maybe yeah, it's not. Yeah, I, I think th- we start doing that with, with consoles. We're getting dangerous. Mm. We're also just like reaching for content, I think, at that point. We're just trying to yeah. talk about something. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, that's Microsoft. We have them first up on Sunday. Then we got Bethesda there. We talked about Doom Eternal. You know, think of release date with that, right? Because they God, I hope so. I hope they're like, it's out now. Uh, that'd be nuts. <laughs> Your Someone's wallets gonna do are that. not welcome. Right. <laughs> oh, man. It's a very loud train. Epic store exclusive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I I'm, I'm think it's fair to say a Doom Eternal uh, release date. We have, do you think, uh, oh, with Fallout 76, for sure the next DLC roundup that they have. Yeah, up. they got to bring it with that one, Yeah, which sucks because I think they're still giving out regular updates, so you can't really bring it, bring it. Gotcha. Because you're right. updating. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some mobile presence because they do a lot of mobile games, which w- whether it's um, Blades or um, whatever the last thing they did on mobile. But yeah, I I think I told you I watched the Jimquisition on Blades, right? No. Yeah, he like, God, it's bad. <laughs> gotcha. It's like even like even if he wasn't doing commentary over the footage, I'd spe- still just be looking at it like this is pretty bad. They've done this. Mm. Is it free to play? 
Or you yeah, have to. I want to say it's free to play, but it's like every instance of loot you get. Like you'll see like a pot, so you break the pot, and there's like a pile, and then that's a loot box. Uh, you gotta go through this long like seven second, and I think Jim said at one point you can pay to have the animation play faster. What? And he's like, after a while, I did because <laughs> it just eats up your time yeah. opening all these loot boxes. And it's just like at some point, I have to respect myself <laughs> by paying to open this faster. It's yeah, like, that's nuts. And the and the fighting looked terrible. Like, gotcha. yeah, their whole thing. I think it was the last E three. They're showing off. Hey, this is this you know runs well, and it's a it's an Elder Scrolls on your phone. And but um, it is a gotcha. game on your phone, right? But it's loot box the game apparently. It is loot box the <laughs> game. We did talk about those developers from Prey. Um, they're Arcane Studios. Yeah. Do we see the next you know it, uh, the next title from them? Ooh. So Prey came out in 2017, and Dishonored the last entry was 2016. So I think it's been a good enough time to at least show something off. I don't know that we're getting actual gameplay. Uh, maybe a CG trailer. I can see a sort. CG trailer. That's fair. Like two, what is, so that's two years. Yeah. Um, but in game dev time, that's still like can be a short time. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we at least get a CG trailer. Yep. Yeah, I so. think that's fair. Uh, we have uh, Wolfenstein developers. Um, uh, oh, God, I forget their name. But uh, mm. the young uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood is actually coming out this summer. Do we see something with that? Um, maybe they actually Didn't tease. Youngblood already come out. Uh, that comes out this summer. Oh. And I what will what is Youngblood? It's like um, is that his son. It's, <laughs> it's in daughter? the future. It's actually they yeah they have daughters and they take over whatever. It's like a smaller experience, but it's the same kind of um, kind of idea. And they're just continuing the story. That could um, be fun. Yeah, um, I'm actually pretty stoked. That the th I think they showed off maybe a CG trailer, maybe not gameplay. So maybe we see some gameplay and an actual um, release. Um, so July 26th is when this is coming out. So Hooray. I'm sure they show some kind of teaser, but yeah. Um, so it is. That's Machine when the game's games. coming out. Yeah, July 26th. It's this, uh, this summer. Hmm. Yeah. So, but does that mean that they're? I'm sure they're working on something else. Maybe we see a teaser for their next thing. Um, it might be a little bit too early because the last. Um, Wolfenstein came out, what, last year? I mean, they were one of the ones talking about how, like, they're trying really hard not to burn out their developers. Oh, sure, yeah. So I could see this just being it for them. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so. that's fair. Yeah, take some time, work on what you're working on, but yeah, and we'll see you next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's that. We got, um, oh, I was thinking, what about Rage? Do you think we'll see some DLC announcements for Rage? I think they keep supporting that? Yeah, I can see that. I wonder how it sold. Um, I haven't seen any um, sales data yet, but... Uh, mm. I'm sure. I'm sure it's sold pretty decent, and I wouldn't mind some DLC. I yeah. think after I like leave it alone for a while, come back maybe in the you know holiday season, whatever November, October, I wouldn't mind jumping back in. Yeah, I could definitely see if they do like a Rage Three someday. I I feel like that'll be the one where they finally really fucking nail it. Oh yeah, you're 100 percent right on that. Yep. Like first one was meh, right? But it and had a like cool world. They got world. something now, and yeah. they just nailed the open world more, and yeah. Yeah, I think that's kind of what happened with Just Cause, like. What was it, two? Because Just Cause 1 was just... It was sure. kind of fun. I only played the third one, but yeah. You yeah, you were doing some goofy shit, and then Just Cause 2 came around with your little grappling hook, and you were just like off the fucking rails. Yep. Maybe Just Cause 1 had the grappling hook. It may have. It might have. I know the third had just all these different mechanics going on. Yeah. Um, I brought up The Evil Within. That's also one of their studios. Oh, that is, uh, one isn't of their, it? Uh, titles. But um, yeah, so it's been a while since the last... Uh, um, evil within so i wonder if it's enough time to show off something maybe they do a different um a different create a new franchise but uh yeah mm -hmm. so it was released october 13th 13th 2017 so a good amount of time that's always one where it's like those games never got great reviews but it's got like this cult following yeah i think they did decent but you're right yeah yeah so and I, th never I think you give these me, yeah you give these people more evil within they're gonna keep buying it and they're gonna yep. be happy yep we got, uh, let's see, Evil Within, which is Tango Gameworks is the developer with those. We have, um, do they maybe announce new studios, Bethesda in general? Uh, they've been, uh, I don't know if they use E3 as a platform to show off what they've acquired, but I think they just acquire it and then put out a press release when it happens. But maybe they show off, hey, we also also have this you know developer under our title. What they acquire? That'd be interesting. Yeah, I don't think it's been anyone lately, but maybe they announce something there. That's more of a, like a, a what-if kind of scenario. I wonder... No, never mind. That's some, that's Epic. Mm. I was thinking of Chair Studios. Okay. Um, and Epic has them, or they're just... Uh, yeah, that's Epic. Because they made Infinity Blade, 
And I think oh. they, I want to say they like had them stop doing development on Infinity Blade and then had them working on Fortnite now, which is sort of sad because I had the Muster Brothers. Okay. Um, and uh, they made one of my favorite games of all time uh, called. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> Said it's the the Mustard Brothers, right? Yeah, Mustard Brothers. I don't know video game. Uh, Tabula mm-hmm. Rasa, I want to s- say, is what it's called. Interesting. Uh, of course, the internet's crapping out at this point, but yeah. Try yeah. Try looking up Tabula Rasa game. So this pulled up um, Epic. Uh, this is well, it was just the internet's lagging really bad. Yeah, right it was a different studio back when they made this game. Maybe yeah. it's not Tabula Rasa. Uh, See here, I gotta. Anyway, it's a basically it's a really cool game, and it starts out the gameplay is very simple, but you can dual wield like anything, which is fun because you're dual wielding rocket launchers. Nice. And you choose sort of how you use your experience points, but like the powers you get are insane. So by the end of the game, you are god. Okay. Um. So you have like a shield that can deflect anything. You can just be like giant spaceship over there, crash into that giant spaceship <laughs> over there. Like, nice. Like you were you were absolutely a god. Um. And they did, like, a fun thing with the plot at the very end. Um, mm. uh, but then they never continued. Um, okay. And they're man. now possibly working on Fortnite instead and not... Yeah, I think they're that. working on Fortnite, which, God, I things I'd do to get another game in uh, that series. Um, I see a lot of uh, news ar- news articles about them. Um, so the Worldwide Creative Director of Epic Games, Fortnite... Spy Jinx, Battle Breakers, Robo Battle Recall. Mustard. Gotcha. So Is it Spy Jinx, maybe? No. No, mm. it's not Spy Jinx. Gotcha. Spy Jinx. That's a good punny name. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we'll see what happens with that. But um, as far as, like, new studios under Bethesda's belt. But um, yeah. that really rounds out everything they, that I could find that they might, you know, be, be showing off. I'm sure they have some stuff um, that they're playing close to the chest. Uh, mm-hmm. We have. They did announce that Bethesda th- that they're not going to show off Starfield or El- Elder Scrolls Six at E3. So I'm sure they'll, like you said, they'll they'll stick to that. Yeah, there's. They just piss people off if they didn't. Right. And that would set it up for the future, where if you say you're not bringing something, they're going. Oh wait, but oh, last time. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. That's wink, true. wink. <laughs> and then everyone's disappointed. Yeah. It's like you said nothing. Yeah, we didn't say anything. Yeah. Um, wh- wh- uh, we, let's see. We have Square Enix. They're also having their own presentation. They're taking over the old uh, PlayStation slot. Um, they have the Avengers game that they're probably going to show right. off. They have um, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Do you think we'll see an Episode One release date, or will they do like a it's available now kind of thing? And just like <sighs> drop the... I would fucking drop kill it if they did that. I feel like they need they kind of need to to, to, yeah. to bring back, you know, um, good praise with them. But also it's been a while. So it just drop that. It really has. Yeah. But it, it's also had a lot of development problems. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know if it's on its third restart of this reboot. Oh, um, that's never good. Yeah. So I, I would... I think a lot of people would lose their mind. Yeah. And I, I'd, I'd be down for it. That would also um, get them just good points, you know. Oh, God, yeah. Favor. Oh, yeah. Um, but I think we at least get a release date. Yeah, that's fair. Whether they stick to that release date is another thing. I mean, for the first episode, although I did hear, I forget which art, which um, which uh, site was talking about it, but they're they're trying to focus on each episode being like its own game, So, which is why they're yeah. taking longer. And But, um, yeah, well, hopefully that comes out soon. And I, I did think it. it was funny. I was talking to uh, my buddy uh, about, like, where I was in the game, and I'm like, well, I, th- I think I'm far enough. If they're just doing the first disc, which is apparently when you leave the starting um, city, okay. is when the first desk ends, and like, here's where I am. So I think I'm pretty close. And he's like, no, you're fucking not. <laughs> I'm like, what? But that huge like plot thing that happened. He's like, yep, still not close. Dang. I'm like, oh man, I am not gonna be ready. <laughs> so I got l- a lot more grinding to do. So if they were in this theoretical world, they, if they're able to drop that first episode, do you stop playing the version you're playing on Twitch no. now and? Uh, you don't. No, I want to compare. Gotcha. Okay. So, and it's nice that I know at what point it probably will be. Gotcha. Um, so you can know when to stop on the switch and then start. Yeah, know, and then go it. back and, and, and compare and contrast. So. Well, you're insane, Gavin. I would play the final set. F- I'd play the remake first, but. That's but fine. what if I play the remake and then I go back to the original? I'm like, well, this is this is garbage. <laughs> I, well, it might be. I kind of doubt it, but. Yeah, I hope there's less grinding though. Like, just mm. make more areas. 
That's fucking grinding. It's, gotcha. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Although I've been told people can low level it, and that's cool for them. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> well, let's see. I think it's fair to say we'll see. You know, something. You know, from Final Fantasy VII. I think they officially announced they're going to drop something too. What that is, yeah. I'm not sure. I uh, think people would be saying Sony wins E3 if they did it. Right. Yeah. It would be at, at, at Sony's like, thing, but they're that's, just not. That's the only it. way you rival Kojima right, right now. Um, and I don't even know if that beats Death Stranding, but I mean, I mean, maybe it kind of does. I don't know. I don't, I haven't played Final Fantasy. Yeah. Uh, w- did you put on there that like racing game or something that just got leaked? Oh yeah, there was. Um, that might have been from Ubisoft. No, I think it was Square Enix. If you go to, like, Destructoid right now. It's not now. the roller derby one? Uh, I don't know. I will check it out. I don't know what it is. I just saw, like, it looked like somebody in a cryo chamber. Oh, yes, I do have that. So Outriders is the name. So they, they're teasing that. There's, like, a weird little kind of reveal trailer. I oh, got there is. It's, it's, it's so very is this small. a leak or this is just a release? It's 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 them starting to tease it, basically. Oh. Um, but it will be shown at, at their E3 press conference. I got uh, Fallout vibes from this for some reason. Maybe the character model. Outrider. I'm not sure. But... Um, I'm so getting rage vibes from <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> no. uh, Outriders is the name of the game. Um, it's from Square Enix. They just started teasing this. So here's a little uh, the little clip here. And it, it's, it's very short. If it will load. But it, it shows their, um, their main character. Not loading. Well, Gavin, what do you want from me, okay? <laughs> I was describing it to you. <laughs> Shouldn't that be enough? Paint me a word picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it might not load. Uh, we're, I have uh, AOL 98. So I mean, if nothing else, it's an original IP. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're right. It's original IP. Um, it shows this character coming to life or waking up. And uh, cool. then the teasing the date of the reveal. Good enough. Yeah. I know. It looks uh, interesting. So we'll see what that actually is. Yeah. But yeah, original IP. We need more original IPs, oh less yeah. remakes. Yep. I agree. It's good. Um, what about a sequel? So this is still under Square Enix as a, a reveal uh, for E3, but they have Dying Light. They're publishing Dying Light. Um, so there's have a they been doing Dying Light? So they're for they're oh, I'm sorry, I was thinking of a, a completely different game. Yeah, Dying okay. Light. So they're at least publishing the sequel, but um, they uh, will. Will we see that at their press conference? You know, that's one of the the question marks. Oh. But uh, yeah, I want to say it's so bad. I want. I feel like that game is gonna be so amazing. I liked what we saw on the, I think it was last E3. They kind of showed yeah. off gameplay and like how whoever you, you side with, it changes the, the storyline, but also the world itself. And yeah. yeah, and closes off things. So that's what I want with these divergent paths is like if you do something, something should stop being available. Like right. that's what I thought was really cool in Fallout 3 with the fucking nuke. Oh, right, with you choosing to use it or not. And yeah, that's pretty dope. Like, and storylines just go away when you make those decisions. Yeah, so. but it was my decision. Right. It felt impactful. Yep, no, I agree. Nuke those fuckers. <laughs> they should <laughs> have right. been more interesting. <laughs> All right, Gavin. <laughs> messing around. Uh, and lastly, we have, well, not lastly, but we have Z- Ubisoft. They have their press conference. So there's a weird uh, roller derby online multiplayer game that apparently it leaked last week. It's called Roller Champions, but we'll see that at their E3 conference. I'm down. The problem is uh, roller derby is so confusing. So if it's actual roller derby. This looks more like out of control Fortnite kind of like okay. not by yeah. the rules. Yeah, roller derby rules are very confusing mm. if you don't know them. Yeah, already. I've never sat down and watched the match, but um, I. I'm well, there they for explain the, the rules <laughs> before each match because no one fucking knows them. I'm sure that's not a good. Yeah, that that usually means that. Yeah, then it, it is complicated. Yeah, so we still need to go to a local roller yeah. derby game, though. I I feel bad every time I invite you. It's like thirty minutes beforehand. <laughs> and you're like, dude, like I have I'm here. And do you want to show up? I have plans. <laughs> it's very rare that I have plans, but yeah. But I'm yeah. down for the next one for sure. Okay. Um, we talked about Watch Dogs Legion. We'll see that uh, officially revealed there at their show. Um, maybe a Splinter Cell. We kind of talked about that. Yeah. Um, I was wondering about For Honor. Do you think we'll see a For Honor 2? Has it been a, enough time since then? I know they're supporting the current game, but... God, I couldn't predict that one to save my life. Mm. That could go. That could really go either way. I yeah, don't know I if it's sold that. well enough uh, or the I critical reception. It, it has a big um, community. Does it still? I've, I've, that's just like an- anecdotal. I feel like there's a big community, but... I just um, don't know. Gotcha. So let's see. This uh, The original one uh, re- released on February 14, 2017. So what, a good two and a half, almost three years? Mm-hmm. Or three years? Yeah. Um, so we got For Honor. Um, so they do have... Uh, Ubisoft has Beyond Good and Evil 2, but apparently they officially said it's not going to be at E3 2019. 
Um, huh? Yeah. So when are it, we gonna see that thing? I don't know. That's one that's been. It's almost becoming like Duke Nukem style levels, where it's yeah. just this huge, you know, thing that will maybe never release, but it seems to be an awesome uh, experience. But yeah. Yeah. I think they've showed little bits of of like uh, possible gameplay or like the engine running kind of thing. Yeah, I saw a little bit. It looked stupid ambitious. Mm. So maybe that's the problem too. Yeah, that could be why it's so hard. They're getting all these systems up and running and all that stuff. It, right. Yeah, it is hard to build for a demo for E3 or something. Yep. But it could be a great game. Yeah, uh, I never played the original. Did you play it? I played a bit. Uh, Mitch, Mitch, let me oh, uh, yeah? borrow it. And uh, I really like what I played of it. It's I one of those like cult darlings or kind of like a, it's yeah. very loved what the people play. I mean, it was kind of like a, a Zelda like, but it like had its own personality. Mm. Like it wasn't it, it was definitely inspired by, but it was its own thing. And it was sort of neat and told gotcha. a cool story. OK, from how far I got. But apparently I didn't get to the really good bits. Oh. <laughs> so this, too, is where it you know, gets lit. Uh, when yeah. You that second disc. So, uh, yeah, I know they've done various like HD remasters or remakes to some capacity. I know I've seen some kind of like reiteration of it but i've never of that this. did they oh, yeah there's they did. there's some kind of hd thing not like a full-blown you know like uh, uh shadow of the colossus you know remake oh. but uh there was some they like play that. that yeah i think i feel like i'm more likely to jump into that but um yeah so we'll we won't see anything from beyond good and evil but uh so there's an hd apparently um was us uh, this is on ps3 or ps uh, or xbox 360 this is 2011 um let's see IGN has a million years ago yeah so or pc but anyways they did some kind of hd thing but yeah it's yeah. out there cool we got um apparently we won't see assassin's creed this year so but will they tease the one for the eventual one from next year right there was um leaked images or not leaked images but they were teasing pretty heavily in the last assassin's creed with stuff on the, in the environment showing off the next one possibly being i want to say it was like um it was whatever the last god of war took place that same kind of um um a world or time period what's that or norse mythology is it norse, yeah. norse mythology i feel like they were teasing that for the next assassin's creed i don't think they've gone uh, there yet so yeah why not? could be cool i always spell assassin's creed wrong and i'm not i'm not backspacing i'm just going forward <laughs> but um yeah so do, do we see some kind of uh reveal trailer or teaser i think it's it's possible but we're not uh, we're not expected to see anything this year for sure i, I think it feel Somewhat weird in that universe because you think like the assassins in the original Assassin's Creed felt very sneaky, very stealthily. You don't think mm. of like a, a Viking as being yeah a stealthy, sneaky Subtle killer, unless you're thinking sneaky. of like a Loki style character, which I guess sure. But oh, okay, this is actually in Division Two. So um, Division Two is yeah, set so in it's a Viking, Viking world. It's a possible Viking world, and that they they teased in Division Two. Apparently, it's like in the wall art, some kind of image. But um, yeah, yeah <laughs> so maybe. Um, yeah. Either way, they've been kind of nailing it with the last uh, iterations of Assassin's Creed, and so I'm I'm trust that they'll do something cool. It was definitely a big offshoot. Yeah. Uh, we have. Did you ever look into Skull and Bones? Those their kind of ship combat game. It almost looked like it was an offshoot of the Black, Black Sails or Black Flag. Yeah, couldn't um, couldn't give a shit. But gotcha. I I know a lot of people really like that game. Right, apparently. So I, yeah, and so I this think this is for them. Yep, it seems to be following the same kind of uh, uh, combat or um, game mechanics, but this is this one's actually delayed to 2020, so it won't be at E3 2019. So <laughs> that should. worries me. I feel like the the concept of that game looks very very simple, mm. and it worries me that it's getting delayed. If it is that simple, maybe there's right. something huge and massive that we have no idea about. Yeah, but for right now, it. I mean, it's going to get beaten out by fucking Sea of Thieves. Right. Yeah. Like, like yeah. I already got my ship combat. Why do I need... Yep. With your buddies, you can play online. So it's like, oh, yeah. What, what you are they going to play with PC with? and Xbox yeah. and possibly Switch here coming up? Like, what do mm. I need What do I need this game for? There was a leak for a possible... Or it was another rumor uh, taken with a grain of salt, but it was Witcher 3 on Switch that um, some website had posted and removed. So... Not a chance in hell. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> that is an older game, but it seems very taxing for the Switch. Yeah, you right. can't run that on Switch. No way. Right. You can't have all those trees swaying in the wind like that. That, <laughs> well, that took a lot on its own, yeah. Um, I I mean, it'd be cool. Gotcha. But have the Nintendo Direct, Gavin. That's the last little bit of E3 stuff coming up. Mm -hmm. So will we see Animal Crossing, Luigi's Mansion 3, 
Um, these are actually, yeah, these are titles they're going to talk about on their Yeah, Luigi's right. Mansion 3. Yeah. Astral Chain, I'm not sure about that Ooh, one. Ooh, I want to I wanna wanna know. I want to know how you play that, because that seems like that's what they're touting, is like, it's how you play it. That's the fun part. So oh, we okay. don't know what that is. Oh, interesting. You might have just described this to me, but that's cool. Yeah. So we'll see something with that. Uh, I put Metroid, question mark. I know they switched um, um, oh, the teams to, to work on it. Yeah, yeah. so... Do we see anything with that? Maybe it's way too early to talk That's about to see. Way too early. That's fair. Which sucks. Um, also, For people so who care about that. Yeah. I, I I want them to do an awesome Metroid, but yeah. yeah. I mean, they've given us an amazing Mario. Right. An amazing Zelda. Right. That's a next up in fucking line. Yep. Yep. So it it deserves to get that. I mean, really, what other what other older Nintendo. Sh- characters yeah, really deserve to have that to kind of bring back yeah like um, you could kind of do wario but Wario's i wouldn't mind a party game like a new wario i wouldn't mind that yeah i mean they did make a release of War- mario party that people liked yeah yeah you're right but uh, like um with wario it was just like straight or at least i'm thinking of like the game boy ones where it was yeah. very quick um little mini games i wouldn't mind that yeah. on switch that'd be pretty dope it would but i it'd be nice to have old mario Mm. And because he's evolved, he's like new weird hipster Mario <laughs> is so different than original. Or sorry, I keep saying Wario. Mario. Yeah. Wario, yeah. yeah, it's it's so different. He it has would be nice to hipster, yeah. yeah. It'd be nice to have that. I could certainly see them bringing uh, Mario Paint. Oh, I mean, Switch? with the yeah, with the Joy Cons, that's something you could. Uh, I would like to see what they do. Even with just that. with the touch screen. Yeah, with the touch screen too. Um, or they make a big cardboard like. Crayon with the Joy Cons, you know, with the, the Labo <laughs> to make some kind of like a 3D that drawing. That would be thing. adorable <laughs> and probably not be that hard. Um, so yeah, what else do they have? So we had that we got mm. a new Mario Kart coming out, which I don't know if it's a re-release or what. What exactly it is? It maybe it is a new one. Which one? A new Mario Kart called something Global Tour or something. Oh, you might be right. I haven't. Uh, I haven't um, so there's there's definitely stuff that's coming back that I don't know what it is, gotcha. but I think there's a lot of stuff that we've already seen. So we've got new and I still need to go back and watch that last Pokemon direct. Yeah. Um, with the Pokemon uh, company, I didn't see, I didn't watch the, the actual direct. I know mm-hmm. I read kind of details afterwards. There was Pokemon sleep that they announced, which is like a sleep game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to know. I don't know what it is. I would like to know. Yeah. It's some kind of little peripheral that they're going to sell you that almost like um, a Fitbit that tracks your, um, movement it does the same thing with sleep yeah and so you just somehow that that data translates into how you play the game but uh yeah um, i feel like that stressed me out more and then like i'm not catching enough pokemon <laughs> like fuck gotta get to sleep <laughs> right uh yeah no it's it's neat um yeah what what do they bring back but yeah they've announced so much shit i it we could honestly just get a press conference this year of here's all the stuff you guys know just an update mm. Like this is coming out here, Pokemon. That's true. Sword and Shield is coming out, and you know it could. This could honestly be not that great a press conference, which would be really too bad because this is going to be the first one without Reggie. I right. mean, he yep. may. I mean, he could make a cameo. I hope makes a cameo. But Bowser's got to step up and be the meme lord. Yeah. That was Reggie, which is <laughs> those are some big fucking does he shoes. Does right to away? Fill. Like, what does he do to create <laughs> the next? Yeah, he's got to do something. He's oh. Gotta bring it. I, I don't know whether that would gain him respect. <laughs> Just like crunches down on a Tide Pod while planking and dabbing. <laughs> while Dang. somehow still owling. Uh, <laughs> owling I'm not sure about. That, that must be a newer thing. But yeah, owling then was, win. I think owling was what came out immediately after planking. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, either way, yeah. So he's got to do. He's got to bring the fire if he wants to get you know to fill the Reggie shoes for sure. Bowser's um, got to bring the fire. But you're right. So Doug Bowser, yeah, this this will be his first. I imagine he'll be there his first Nintendo Direct as yeah. American president. Um, we got um, Mario Maker's got to make a huge splash because it's coming out soon. Yeah, it actually has a release date for Mario Maker. So yeah. d- but they they held a separate one f- to show off Mario Maker. So I doubt that they, um, you know, spend much time on it this time, right? Potentially, because yeah. I know they actually uh, Mario Maker two. Yeah, but, uh, we they have just that. had a big press conference, but I think yep. they'll still make a big. I mean, they always do with their their stuff that's releasing soon. Kind of give them a big talk up. But gotcha. Do you think we'll see any announcement for um, a Switch Mini or a Switch Pro kind of release? They said no. 
Which yeah. I think kind of sucks because I think a Switch Mini. You know, I feel like would be cool when we laid out that that quote. It was like we have no plans to release that this year. Do, but do you think that means that they? I think they said show it? off at E3. Uh, okay, I think okay. they said no showing off at E3. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Which I mean, I'd still like to alive. see, um, but I don't think it's happening. As far as like huge, crazy drop the mic moments with that maybe not happening. What about the them collaborating with Xbox? Do you think if it happens, we see it through their direct? <sighs> or they reiterate after Xbox. Uh, It'd be it? so cool. Mm-hmm. It would be so cool. Yeah. So it may, maybe more just indie stuff that they show off, or just. Can you imagine if like there was a little bit of Nintendo in the Microsoft press conference, and a little bit like. Yeah. Like, like if you got just like a coin and you see it, and like at the end they're just like, "Stay tuned." <laughs> I wish and more companies. Like, right. Get. <sighs> I wish companies would play with that more because it's on the internet, and the internet takes apart everything. So kind of leave little yeah. Easter, egg, Easter eggs. They do the – eventually, I think it's like on the uh, – really popular in the Microsoft um, E3 where somebody has a T-shirt and they show it off and that has some well. kind of cool announcement. Um, I would like more of those little Easter eggs because, yeah, we're going to freak out over it. So Yeah. Well, I mean, Nintendo did that fantastic one with uh, sort of the announcement of Smash Bros. Ultimate when it was during the Splatoon event. Oh, you're right. At the end. And yeah. then, yeah, you saw the symbol and no one's like, what does that mean? Right. Is it a new one? Is it a remake? <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, that so, was dope. That was great. So they have that under their belt. They always have the ability to, to do that. So hopefully, yeah, they also pull it off here. Yeah. But yeah, so we'll see. They're the ones where I feel like they could maybe pull something out of left field more uh, likely than the other ones. But uh, yeah, but maybe not. Also, it could be a standard direct. Well, the other thing they could. Well, shit. No, because Kojima just works with Sony now. Because that's the two things. Yeah. Like Kojima and. To my understanding, like Kojima and Miyamoto, like really, really respect each other, and that's how we got like the remake of uh, the first Metal Gear on the GameCube. Oh, interesting! Cause he just like, I, to my understanding, they were just out at lunch, and he just asked him if he'd do it. Oh, that's awesome! And he was <laughs> like, "Yeah, okay." He just makes a phone call, and it happens. It yeah. wasn't even a phone call; he was sitting right there. All right, like once they're having dinner, oh, or yeah, lunch, yeah, yeah. he's like, "Yeah, okay, I'll just handle it." And then, thanks. yeah, so that'd be cool, something like that. It would be nice, but yeah, with Sony, if he's working for Sony now, there's just no way they can do that. Yeah. I did miss uh, Devolver Digital has their conference Sunday night as well. Um, yeah, I'm sure they'll show off some cool stuff. Do we predict anything besides batshit crazy? No, but that, but that's what I want to see. Some days, like I feel like last press conference, maybe it was the one before, like they barely showed off any games. It was mostly more just batshit crazy. And, <laughs> and I was kind of like, all right, you could have had more. Because they have so many games they release per year. It seems like it, yeah. yeah. So why not some more of that, some more of those? Right. Yeah, they kind of have to strike a balance of the weird, cool skits, but with actually showing off some stuff. Yeah. But, um, yeah. PC game show, that'll be cool. No one gives two shits. Hey, we had here. some cool shit last year <laughs> at the PC gaming show. What do you have, like, um, you know, TurboTax 9? Like, what do you show off during the Minesweeper 11? I'll fucking throw this microphone <laughs> at you. Stand and all. When it comes to PC stuff. So that's my <laughs> Minesweeper 11. <laughs> it could be pretty legit, the next one. Um, Legend of Soltair. <laughs> yeah, sure. Which is uh, what my buddy always called solitaire. Solitaire, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it sounds more epic that way. Yeah. Uh, and then EA Play at some point. I actually think it starts off with EA Play at June 7th. So. Um, EA Play? Which, yeah, that's their own little event they'll have on, on Friday. Man, EA on Friday? Yeah. They're kind of, I think they're officially skipping E3, but this is their thing right around the whole E3. Uh, so we've got a little bit of, we've got Google, and then we got EA, yep. and then we got actual. And then the shit hits the fan. That's, That's that. weird. It is weird. Yeah, but we'll see what happens with that. We got uh, Stadia coming up end of the week, and we have E three kicking on the weekend. Uh, it's gonna get nuts. I, I we were we were sort of talking about earlier via text very very mm-hmm. briefly because I was too busy. But like whether we want to do something afterwards, and I feel like it's gonna be one of those ones like is this hype or is this not hype? Because if it's not hype, I really. With Stadia? Yeah, like mm. if there if it's nothing then I don't feel like doing a well, cast afterwards. Gotcha. I understand. Well and that's the thing, it's it's at like ten or eleven AM, so we'll be able to see afterwards, like, hey, is this anything worth, you know, chatting yeah. about? But they're apparently laying down price and release dates, and I feel like that alone is getting towards the you know, the window of like, hey, let's talk about what's going on. Yeah. But They've yeah, been we'll working see. on this for so long, but I don't know how many games they have. Right, and we have yet to see some hardcore like you know, releases tied to them. I know that Doom is apparently working on their 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 mm-hmm. releasing with that. But yeah, maybe they spent some time showing off some gameplay and using the Stadia platform. Yeah. Who knows? They gotta prove it's easy to port too. 
Oh, interesting. With developers, well, I feel like with the last one they talked with a lot of developers, but is that did that does that mean it's easy to develop for? I'm not sure, but we'll see. It's getting close. All right, Gavin, let's end our episode today. Uh, mm-hmm. Where can they find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Drunk Devs. Awesome, and you can find me on Twitter as well at uh, Fonzie Pants. And so that's it for us this week. We will see you guys um, whenever we decide to see you guys again. (laughs) We'll see you. Bye-bye.